Being 7.04 on Tuesday, December 19th, may I have a motion to call the meeting to order and accept the agenda? So moved. And second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any walk-ins this evening? There being none, we'll move to the report of the acting town administrator, Al. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I want to update you on a few items that have been uh, underway here the last week or so, just so that you and the town are aware of it. First of all, the, the, uh, I'm happy to say the five-year capital plan has been prepared and soon will be sent along to capital planning, you folks, and the advisory committee for review in preparation for a final presentation uh, at town meeting. Uh, the town and school uh, FY19 capital projects, just for the year that's coming up, um, the, there were, um, we're recommending, Nancy Holt and I went through these in fine detail. Nancy, a lot finer detail than I did, by the way. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> um, uh, we are recommending $10 million worth of capital projects out of a near, nearly $22 million that were uh, proposed. This cuts across the school, the enterprises, and the town. Uh, funding sources for these projects include 52% of enterprise borrowing, 27% from free cash, 7% from revolving funds, 6% from enterprise retained earnings and receipts, and the remaining sort about 8% other sources, capital stabilization, general fund borrowing, and taxation. Um, you can see the majority of that is in, in the enterprises. Mm -hmm. um, included in the plan are funds for a new senior center design, replacement of the irrigation system at Widow's Walk, improvements to the schools, the Hummel Rock Fire Station, public safety communication equipment, um, improvements to the sewer and water plants, uh, improvements to the community TV studio, and Egypt Beach parking area. Um, it includes also updating the town's master plan and replacing numerous vehicles in the DPW, the schools, and the fire department and details to follow. Great. Um, then the next thing I'd like to report on is the, the operating budgets. And first of all, they were all submitted on time by the departments. And then Nancy spent one Herculean effort over a weekend assembling those budgets into one consolidated budget sheet so we could look at what are the budget requests and compare that to the forecasting committees forecast of revenues. Now, in the forecasting committee's forecast of revenues, some of those are a bit conservative because we don't know what the revenues actually will be. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we're holding with all the conservative estimates for revenues and comparing budget requests with revenues. There was a gap of $600,000. So um, we went through all those budgets, 21 meetings with department heads over 11 days to whittle down those budgets so that we now have a balance. We are, we're able to meet the forecasted revenues with, uh, the with the budgets that are in place and that we'll be forwarding to you for your review over the course of January and February. Well, we'll give you the whole budget, then you'll be reviewing it with departments over January and February. Um, I'm happy to say that uh, even whittling down the 600,000, there was no fall on your sword um, issues. It pretty much, I think we everyone uh, can live within the budgets that, that we're pulling together. Of course, this will be the budget that, that will be the department heads and gyms and yours to <coughs> deliver over the next year. But uh, he's coming in at a time where he can, It's a good. it was a good exercise in that he now knows what the budgets are, that they're in balance. And importantly, um, we reviewed all the goals and challenges and accomplishments by each department to ensure that they were focused, uh, that the priorities were right, and that there's a clarity around them so that you could understand what it is that they say the challenges are and the, and the plans are for the next year. Um, and this will help him get on board with his, with his new staff when he shows up on January the 3rd. So in these um, balanced budgets for the enterprises and the revolving funds and the general funds, kind of the key service improvements are Improvements in the services in the in the Board of Health. We're we're advocating adding a staff member there. Uh, improvements in services at the Council on Aging. Uh, uh, Subsidize paying for the FACS Substance Abuse Prevention Program in anticipation that we, if we don't get a grant, we'll still want that program to continue. Um, additions to help with the elections process. Uh, additions to the uh, expectations of needs in the veteran subsistence areas and um, supporting of the two sister city projects. So I think we've got a set of budgets that, that um, if approved, 
will be workable and, and uh, will deliver additional services for the community. The next area I'd like to cover is the, just a re reminder on the Ellis property. Uh, the Attorney General's office has gotten back and granted an extension of time because they recognize that what they had asked us to do involves town meeting action and legislative action. So converting the bulk of the Ellis estate uh, into a, a, a property on which there's a conservation restriction applied to it uh, requires that we remove the conservation restriction that's already on it under Article 97. And so that's why there's this complication. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll have a warrant article for the, uh, special, for the right. annual town meeting to have town meeting vote to take it out of 97 and apply a conservation restriction on it. And then the legislators, local legislators, have offered to help <coughs> getting a quick legislative action through so that before uh, July 1st that everything will be uh, in place. This will include the swap property as well as the, the old Ellis estate, which is already in conservation. Uh, the senior center. <coughs> um, we are on the cusp of issuing the uh, request for services for an all owners project manager. Uh, the funding that's available is already available for the first portion of, of this work. It wouldn't, the funding doesn't carry us all the way through construction because what we're asking for is an OPM to carry us through architectural design and a fall town meeting where then a, a firm estimate will be available for presenting to town meeting to request uh, town if, if, if this is the will of the town uh, to go forward with a um, construction funding and uh, then perhaps a debt exclusion override if that's the choice for how we would fund this. Can I jump in there, Al? Pardon? Can I jump in for a second? Yes, please. Um, so how's that process going to take place? You're going to go before the Public Buildings Committee. Yes, we're issuing the RFP. The Public Building Committee Commission uh, <laughs> reviews all of the respondents. Uh, makes us a recommended selection you and by the way the there'll be two members from the council on aging that we will ask you to uh, um, like the live appoint Actually. yes mm -hmm. so at, in your January 11th meeting you'll appoint two members of the council on aging mm -hmm. and in the six, 16th of January meeting the um, Public Building Commission will review the applications they'll make a recommendation coming out of that to you in the next meeting or two There'll be some negotiation on contract pricing with the town administrator and the OPM selectee. And then uh, you will vote to award a contract. And then the OPM will then begin work. Their first work will be to then go select an architectural firm. We have money to select the architectural firm. Right. No. We have money. No, I'm sorry. To select the architectural firm and then at spring town meeting, there is a budget art, a, a capital article to then hire the architect. The architect would be hired in late April and would begin work, do the preliminary architectural work through the summer, be ready for town meeting in the fall, and at that point in time, we would have we would have committed about five hundred and seventy thousand dollars towards the project, and then if town meeting votes to go forward, then we would go forward at that point. So 570 or so yeah. before we put a shovel on the ground. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the assessor, uh, as you know, Steve Jarzabowski has uh, asked, is planning to re retire uh, coming in the beginning of January. Uh, we've gone out uh, and sought applicants. We have 10 applicants for that job, all oh. with very good uh, CVs. And this is a really a positive recognition of the stability of the way that that man has managed our that end of our business and uh, the, the respect that he has. People want to go to jobs that that you know are in control. And clearly, with ten applicants, they feel very good about uh, Steve's work after 29 years of service to, the, to our community. So uh, the top three inter candidates are being interviewed: uh, one today, two tomorrow by a board that consists of Steve, Nancy Holt, and Todd Glowack, who is the assessor. Uh, they will uh, recommend uh, among those three, I presume, uh, their first choice. And uh, then we will make an offer to that person. And then uh, Steve is offered to come back in January uh, to help onboard him if necessary. As it works out, 
Steve and all of them all pretty much all know each other, and they're all experienced people. So it'll be a matter more of meeting people, I think, than anything else. So uh, that this is all set. Jim will then wrap this up when he arrives in January. He'll make the offer. And, okay. 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 Uh, we received two grants recently. One uh, safety grant from our insurer, M Mia, uh, and that's for confined entry, um, confined space entry equipment. You know, going down into a manhole uh, or other confined spaces. It would be equipment that to uh, ensure the safety going in and also, if necessary, retrieve the individual if something does happen. It's a $7,000 safety grant. It's one of the benefits of being part of my insurance. Um, we're real happy with that. Also, I just got received notice that the Army Corps of Engineer 301 grant has been awarded. I don't know the amount yet, but it's uh, for preliminary engineering on a seawall work in the area of Turner and Oceanside work, some preliminary work there. So grants just keep coming in. That's great. And, and almost lastly, uh, Cole Parkway. This is the next to last item. <coughs> uh, please report that this is the very last year that you will see stinky, unsightly docks stacked in Cole Parkway all winter long. Should have saved that, that for John. <laughs> John. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm sorry, John. We'll, we'll have here. to update him at the end. John, if you're so, watching, yes. good news. John will be here momentarily. Um, uh, the Harbor Master's got to come up with a very clever project. It's a reapplication of projects that professionals know in, in marinas. They, they're installing, he's changing how the docks are installed so the docks will stay in the water all winter yep. and they'll be kept uh, from freezing with de icers, which are pumps that keep the water stirred up. Uh, you can go down to the sea He has some in the water for a demonstration project right now. I have a little video of it I could send you if you want. Uh, but it's a neat project, and, it'll, and it will really improve the quality of life during the winter down on the, yeah. on, the on Cold Parkway. Thanks, um, Stephen, for finding this. And story. lastly, the new town manager, manager, town administrator, Jim Boudreau, dropped by today to do some pe sign up paperwork for his uh, uh, getting ready to come come on board on January third. Uh, he'll be in the office a little bit next week, uh, interviewing candidates for the human resources manager, and we have uh, picked a couple of really good candidates. A couple internal and a couple external candidates that we're looking at for the human resources manager. Um, he'll come to work on the second full time, and I've prepared for him a hot sheet of kind of the rolling article items that you know are, are either in process or ex he, he could expect to see. And uh, we'll send that to him next week, so he'll be all ready. He can have a happy holiday and hit the ground running. And and I'll be running. <laughs> <laughs> you got that ankle brace. <laughs> Is that, That's it. Thank is that you. it, Al? Mm -hmm. Well, Al, first of all, you know, thank you and Nancy for all the budgetary work. Um, it's a lot to pull <laughs> everything together, and all the department heads, but um, obviously uh, we wouldn't have been able to get to where we are without the two of you leading the way, and, and especially you stepping in to yes. continue to move the town forward you know, during our interim here. You've been great to work with. Can't thank you enough. Yes. Well, it was interesting being on the other side of the table during budgets because in my <laughs> ex years of being involved with the town, I was always the one whining for more, yeah. more, more, more. Well, and now job. I had to on that side. Yeah. tell them how just impossible that was, yeah. which I didn't get any whining. I found that I was probably the only person that ever whined. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Anyone else have anything? Yeah, Al, I'll, I mean, Gosh, we were on the advisory committee together, what, 20 years ago or yeah, something? Got, that's, when, yeah. that's when it all started, that you got bored with that and you went to ZBA and then you <laughs> came in and be the DPW director. And now all the way up here, you really, you were very qualified to step in. You did a great job, you know, in the short period we're here. Short to us, long to you. <laughs> um, but really, I don't know what we would have done without you doing it. So I, I really appreciate it as a citizen for you stepping up and really helping the town out during that transition period. And, um, and it just turned out great. You know, it really turned out great and everything. It's, it's been, you know, no bumps along the road and Jim's gonna come into a pretty solid position. And, you know, like you've said all along, the staff behind him is, is superb. So I think, uh, I think it's gonna be great, but yep. thank you for all your effort. You're very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Al, thank you. I just, the only thing I could add is how smooth it went. And, and for me, and I don't, you know, <laughs> Nancy and Lorraine, and, you know. Uh, oh, we had some tough days. Well, I don't know, <laughs> you, you, hit it, you hit it well. You know, no, that's, that's really. for sure. But thank you yeah. very, very much. I, I was ast I'm astounded by the quality of the staff, the dedication of people who are in town hall. I mean, when I was uh, working with them day in, day out, I knew that, but you're busy all the time. But when you find out the degree of support that people give each other, 
uh, and the dedication to their job. It's just, it's really a wonderful thing to, to see in, in action, so. Well, don't go far, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Al. That's it, right? Any other report? Uh, yes. Can I ask a question? Uh, sure. Gordon Price, 48 Manlock Road. Is it the intention that the two members who will be representing the Council on Aging to the Public Building Commission will have voting privileges? Yes. Yeah, yeah. actually, yeah, do. They two, yeah. Members that two, yeah. Uh, yeah. two members are always added by whatever's, um, whatever building is being built. There's a subject group. So for police and fire, there's police and fire were added as voting members. So the Public Building Commission consists of five standing you? members and then two appointed from the subject building uh, for the duration of that topic. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. I also would like to uh, add my thanks to Al for <clears throat> all he's done for the Council on Aging over the last year, two years, walking us through the sites, the brambles and bushes, and yeah. uh, pointing out uh, advantages and disadvantages. And I also want to thank the Board uh, of Selectmen and the Chairman for uh, helping to move the Senior Center project forward. I think it's a great, uh, a great uh, track that we're on, and I look forward to uh, more good news in, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Price. Right. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is a discussion vote for a library donation. Jesse, Finney, how are you, Jesse? Good, how are you guys? Welcome, Hi. we're great. Thanks for having me. <coughs> um, we like starting off with good news. Yeah, uh, well this is definitely good news. Um, I'm here to present a donation um, from the estate of oh, Eileen so Glavin, um, okay. who is um, uh, a patron of ours who passed away recently um, much too early um, in her life uh, she was in her mid 60s mm. um, I did wonder if it was okay to say a few words about her of course um, so I unfortunately never got to know her myself but I talked to some of my staff about her and um, she was a really wonderful person and um, I really think it speaks um, to her uh, you know um, she gave to many, many charitable organizations um, through her estate, and we were one of, of many, um, both regionally and nationally. And um, this, you know, is a donation that I hope will help people like her. It's my understanding that a lot of the times that she came to the library, she was um, looking for materials to broaden her horizons and, and learn more about life. Um, and I think that she sort of used the library um, as part of a path to, to grow as a person. Um, that's kind of my understanding of um, the way that she, the, that she used the library. She apparently had a really quick wit and always had kind of a, a little funny thing to say to, to the staff and um, was just, from my understanding, a really um, kind person um, and a person who, um, again, uh, didn't have a, a nearly long enough life, but really lived her life to the fullest. Um, so we appreciate her donation. Um, and, you know, for anyone, we do get recognized in people's wills from time to time or <coughs> other ways. And of course, other people give the library donations. A lot of people have given to the library project. And um, we just want everybody to know how meaningful it is when we're recognized in that way. Um, not obviously the monetary benefit is wonderful to be able to continue to grow our collection and our resources <coughs> but also just to um, know that those people who are so much a part of our lives we're a part of their lives too and um, that our organization has meaning to them in their life because that's really why we come to work every day um, why we do the work that we do so um, I just wanted to um, thank Miss Glavin and um, and just to let you guys know about this wonderful donation. No, well, thank you, and I think you're absolutely right. It is a true testament to the service and the, the warmth that she felt there at the library and her passion for literature. Um, do you have any, um, do you ever name anything after a gift <coughs> like this? Or I know it's too early to know, you know the thoughts of how you would use it, but to make sure that she is memorialized? We do, and um, I'd like to reach out to, um, there's there's a couple of people who are really closely linked with her estate. She didn't leave b behind um, children or anything like that, but I know that there are some people linked to her estate that I'd like to reach out to and find out if she were to be recognized by name, 
you know, what what do you think would be a priority for her, and and how would we go about doing that um, that would best honor her? Okay, that's great. Does anybody have any questions for Jesse? Any comments? No. That's wonderful. No, it's great. Yeah, it's wonderful. So thank you. So um, we'll just have a motion. Move that the Board of Selectmen accept a donation from the estate of Ms. Eileen Glavin to the town, Situate Town Library. Second. Motion by Ms. Canfield, second by Mr. Harris. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Jesse. Thank and you so much. Please you guys have our wonderful holidays. To the estate as well. Thanks. No, that's the background. Yeah. Okay. So next on the agenda is um, discussion and vote for the voyage New Year New Year's Eve recreation license liquor <coughs> license. Keith O'Callaghan, how are you, Keith? Good evening, Madam Chair. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Good evening. <laughs> so I know um, when you first came to apply for a license, mm -hmm. um, we granted it to midnight. Yes. And so um, you are here to request a little bit of an extension for New Year's Eve. Yes, please. Yeah, an hour past. We like to uh, 1 a.m. Till 1 a.m. Yeah. And have you notified any of the abutters? I have not. No. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Keith? Mm -hmm. No questions. Maybe a comment. But yeah. It's what the other establishments have. It's New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. and windows are closed, and it's so. Yeah. It's not like it's Fourth of July or something like that. Right. Right. Do you have any? Um, Plans set in place. What type no of no plans? It was kind of like a last minute thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife was like, Dude, Are we gonna do something? And I didn't even think of it. So, last minute, I went to Lorraine and try to get in before. Sure, Tony, do you have uh, any questions? I think it's a great idea. I think, um, you know, I, I don't know about the butter, so I wish we had. Uh, what do you think we have to do for that, Lorraine? Just contact them if you can tomorrow. I think you can send a note to the abutters and let them Sure, I can do yeah. that. Yeah, okay. they're all very close. I think it's always a good idea to listen to your wife's recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this really, it was a last minute thing, you know. Okay. No, I don't think it would be uh, unexpected by your neighbor. So. Just hopefully someone shows up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they will. Well, you know, it's, then they're not rushing them out. At, at yeah, no. Right. right. Yeah. Is there anybody in the audience that had any comments or concerns? Okay. Don't see any. Um, I'll take a motion. Will the Board of Selectmen extend the liquor license hours for the Voyage Restaurant to 1 a.m. on January 1st, 2018 for New Year's Eve? Second. Moved by Mr. Vignani, second by Mr. Harris. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks very much. Four zero. You're all set. Thanks a minute. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great holiday. Have a great New Year's, New Year's Eve. Eve. Good night. Sounds like fun. Okay, the next item on the agenda, I'm going to delay it's a discussion and vote on the naming of the old Gates Gym um, and the sign more. I hope you don't mind, but uh, Mr. Danahy wanted to be present for that discussion and he should be along momentarily. Is that okay with you? That's fine. Lorraine told me. I just came around. Okay, okay. Just wanted to set the expectation. All right, great. Is Jen here? <laughs> yep, there she is. Okay. So the next on the agenda is um, a discussion and vote for a proposed flu clinic revolving fund general bylaw amendment. Hi, Jen. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. <coughs> so the, um, the Board of Health currently administers a flu clinic revolving fund, um, and the current wording of the revolving fund limits us to being able to provide flu vaccines. Mm -hmm. um, our public health nurse would like to be able to expand her offerings during clinics um, to other public health vaccines, including but not limited to, say, pneumonia and shingles. Um, so we're proposing to amend the bylaw so that she could use the revolving fund monies to purchase and provide those additional vaccines. Okay. <coughs> and that has to be done at town meeting, right? Right, correct. It has to be done at town meeting. So this is just a motion to put that bylaw language change on town meeting and on the warrant, right? This is a motion to, for the selectmen to ask the Board of Health to vote on this to put on the town meeting warrant. Say that again? Yeah. Okay. It's a motion to have the Board of Health review it and make a, and put it on the town meeting warrant. Okay. Like oh, the oh they would recommend it. Right. right. So they have to recommend it. Okay. Got it. To so so we're directing them to do that. You're just directing them to do that. Yes. Okay. And explain the money transaction there. 
So, so, so it's a revolving fund. Mm -hmm. So um, we pay for <coughs> vaccines. Um, right now we pay for flu vaccines out of that fund. And the town gets reimbursed a certain dollar amount for every flu shot it gives a resident. Um, so I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in the last year, the public health nurse um, brought in approximately sixteen thousand dollars into the into the flu revolving fund. Um, so she's been making money um, and would like to be able to spend that in additional ways, um, given that the pneumonia vaccine has become um, an item that that older folks in particular would like. And is it the state that reimburses? That's correct. And is it within the state bylaw if we're getting reimbursed for flu? Do we have the flexibility to utilize it for other vaccines? I believe we do. Yeah, I, I don't know of any restriction on it because it's, a, it's more of a Medicare reimbursement. Okay. Right. right. All right. It's so not specifically tied to a specific. The state used to provide the vaccine. They don't provide it anymore. They don't okay. Buy it. We we purchase it using the revolving funds and between um, the insurance and. Um, state-run health care, Medicare, we get reimbursed for every shot that she provides. So she provides documentation on a monthly basis during the clinic season so that we ultimately get reimbursed. So I think we're partially reimbursed for, our t for the nurse's time as well. Right. Okay. Hmm. All right. Okay. Um, any other questions for Jen? Nope. Nope. Motion. Motion. Move to turn over general bylaw article on proposed expansion of the flu clinic revolving fund to the Board of Health for review and recommendations. Second. Moved by Mr. Vignani, second by Mr. Harris. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? You're good. Four Thank zero. Thanks, Jen. It's a great idea. Thank you. So thanks for doing that. Have a great night. Thank you, too. And happy holidays. Have a great holiday. I have to say that to everybody tonight. It's the last time we'll see everybody until next year, right? See you next right. year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next is a discussion and vote for proposed zoning map amendment uh, for the extension of the business district and overlay district. Brad? Hello. How are you, Brad? Good, how are you? I'm great. <coughs> Excuse me. So is this another type of motion just to ask the planning board to? Yeah, so we are, the, the motion would be, or the, the vote would be to refer it back to the planning board so they okay. can hold a public hearing on the proposed uh, zoning amendment. Um, so we had, just for by way of background, we had the current property owner at 7 New Driftway uh, approach the planning board about a potential rezoning of their property. I don't know if you have um, the map in yeah. front of you. I just have a small one here. Yeah, we have. Uh, but if you, if you look at the map, um, the existing, <coughs> the property at 7 New Driftway, there's, it's almost like kind of a, a hole in the donut, if you, if you think of it that way. Mm -hmm. The properties. You have a color copy on your desk. Yeah, we do. Oh. Oh, on the desk as well. On the desk as well. Thank you, Lorraine. So the, the property, <coughs> excuse me, is completely surrounded by uh, the existing general <coughs> business district. Um, and this property, however, is, is residentially zoned. And the, the property, the, the building that's been there for decades, but the, that use as a medical office has been that way for several decades. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. So the, the proposed, uh, you know, the, the owner petitioned the planning <coughs> board, would we support a change? Um, the planning board does. And this would be really to recognize what's there now. There's already a, a business use there now. Um, and it would, it would also open the door to future changes on the site, um, you know, consistent with the bylaw, other uh, okay. business uses as well. So it's just extending it to his property, the red zone. Yeah, it's kind of mm -hmm. filling in that, again, the, the, yep. the hole in the donut. I don't know why it was overlooked and why it was zoned residential, but it's been in a you know a business use now for decades. I think that's under a special permit now for medical offices only, if I'm not mistaken. Right now, for example, a realtor or an, or an insurance company can move in there. No, I was told, yeah, right? it would only be... Um, as of right would be residential uses or if that has special provisions to be there to be that use only right okay. right yeah that makes sense okay does anybody have any additional questions for brad it makes sense to me so i don't know. yeah so it's just is it the dark green strip only? it is the dark green sorry yes so that's their, their site and right now it's again the existing medical building and then a parking lot <coughs> yeah. makes sense so does it make sense to do the light green strip next to it also? Well, no, the light, the light that green like strip is, yeah, that's the salt marsh and Thailand conservation Was that the, the drain, is that where it goes right into the street? Yeah. yeah, yep. 
Yeah, so this would go to a public hearing with the planning board. We'd have an opportunity for the public to weigh in and review. Um, and then it would eventually, you know, if, the, if it all goes well there, go to town meeting for a vote. So. Okay. So it includes all of his property? All of that property, yes. It's two parcels, but it's uh, it would all right. be included. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions <coughs> for Brad? Did you? No. no. Have a motion move to turn over zoning article on proposed extension of the business district and village business overlay district to the planning board for review and recommendation in accordance with master in law chapter 40a second moved by mr vignani second by mr harris any additional discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. i'll abstain thanks brad great thank well you set. Thanks. thanks for coming in yep. happy thank holidays you. <coughs> thank you too. Have a happy new year thank you all right, so um, John, what, we can go right back up to the naming. We sure. Did, is, are you yeah, I'm okay. fine with that. That's okay. Good. So we'll go back up to agenda item number three, which is a discussion and vote for the naming of Old Gates Gym. Uh, More Glancy, if you want to come up, and I know John, this was um, something that you wanted to present, I think, together with Maura. So yeah, I'll leave it up to the two of you to present it. <coughs> well, I assume Maura is going to probably say that um, there have been some kind of mix-ups with respect to various activities. I know maybe from the town side, maybe uh, not just from rec, but I know with town organizations where people will say, you know, the game or whatever is being um, utilized at gates and people tend to go to gates and then they find out that actually, no, we mean the new gates and then sometimes people are saying gates, so they end up at the new gates only to find out that they're actually at the old gates. So I guess, you know, um, it's funny, in, uh, in, in the legal realm, there are two courthouses in Suffolk, uh, right downtown Boston. It's called Pemberton Square. Um, and there's the old courthouse, and then there's the new courthouse. They're side by side. The old courthouse was built in like 1850, 1870. The new courthouse was built in 1910. So <laughs> the bottom line was it wasn't new, it's still old. And they actually built a newer courthouse in New Chardon Square, which is closer to the garden. So you can see how there can be a mix up or a misconception as to which gymnasium are you going to go use. And so um, I, I know I've seen it on, on some of the private activities and um, this was an issue that we kind of <laughs> talked about briefly in the past about what do we call Gates Gymnasium? What is the name and the origin of the Gates, you know, the old Gates? And so um, one of the things I had done a few years ago in preparation for one of the town meetings was to do some research on the, the schools. And I had happened to take a look at one of the books, a very interesting book about school situates education um, for the past almost 400 years um, at the Historical Society. It's basically situates education by, I think it's um, Fryman, I think is the gentleman's name, Jarvis. So um, in the course of reading up the materials, I was studying about Situates High School and of course the Red School House and now it's the Historical <coughs> Society and then how it was built next to the old town hall that used to be up on First Parish and then how they moved the old schoolhouse and built the present <coughs> high school, which ultimately had been expanded in a few years. And of course, at some point, the high school ended up leaving on First Parish and going up here off of Chief Justice Cushing uh, Highway. And in the process, they were talking about different additions and so on and so forth. So what I had found out was back in 1952, there was an addition put on for the new gymnasium at the time. And at the time it was dedicated, 1954, along with other classrooms, laboratories, and, and different um, um, wings, they had dedicated it to uh, the veterans who had served and died in the Second World War. And they had put a plaque up at the high school that was on First Parish. And so, you know, I was thinking, gee, what if, why isn't there some kind of recognition of it? And of course, <coughs> I think it was about in 2012, there was an offer by uh, one of the residents who offered to redo the court floor for free. And we had another dedication just for the court. The VFW came up and we had, um, you know, recognized the fact that it was for the soldiers and, and I believe World War II. But the problem was is that nobody knows that for certain. You drive by it, just Gates Gym. And so I was always thinking that, gee, we should really have some kind of name on it. I think it's come full circle now. We definitely have to have some recognition of the gymnasium so people can identify where they're going as opposed to gates. Um, the plaque itself had been removed from the then existing high school, which came into <coughs> Gates Middle School and had been brought up to the high school here, and it was actually put outside of the auditorium until they demoed that 
two years ago, and um, now they have the plaque, and I guess the um, school department's looking to try to relocate that probably somewhere near their new gymnasium. But I thought the fact that the gymnasium originally was dedicated to the veterans of World War II, it might be consistent to suggest rededicating it to all veterans, not just the ones who had perished and served and gave their lives, but also all veterans who served both in good times and, and, and in serious times and war times. And um, so I was thinking maybe it would be nice to consider maybe naming it the Veteran Gym, the Veteran <coughs> Memorial Gym, but something to the effect of the vets. Um, one thing I did want to say is, and I thought I got a copy of the, um, the plaque, and I just wanted to at least pay homage to, there are 16 individuals who gave their lives during the Second World War, and they were from Situate. And I just thought I'd, I'd mention them again so that people watching and could understand <coughs> who they were. It was Chase Abbott, a Raymond Andrews, a Wilford Appleton, a Lionel Bush, a Robert Cole, Joseph Dabu, Parker Ewell, Robert Fleming, um, a Chester Gurney Jr., Thomas Harrigan, Edward Hooper, Renee Jacobucci, Nelson Kindlin, uh, Elwin Lane, Edward Nichols, Frank Shea Jr., and an Edwin Spear. So I just thought, you know what? I just thought at this point maybe that would be something to consider. I, I raise it to the rest of the board, and certainly, you know, we go from there. Uh, before we have questions, Maura, did you have um, anything that you wanted to add and some challenges that you're having as well? Well, just another little challenge that we have also. In the back, there's a field. It's always been called Gates Field. So uh, that's where it originated from. Though we had a lot of people in this fall were having a hard time trying to find where's Gates Field, and they'd end up up here when they actually had to go down to the Gates School, the old Gates School. So it's not only the gymnasium that gets confused, it's the whole, the whole area that gets confused um, because of the, of the outside with the field and also the gymnasium. And then eventually we'll be there, so it will be, hopefully they'll be able to find us better than they do now. We're on the ground <coughs> floor of Jenkins, and we, people still don't know where we are. So that's all I, if you do something, I would like to see it. You know, take care of the whole area. Hmm. Interesting. Um, comments? Is is the entrance to that field only from Cudworth? Yes. Okay. Unless you went to the side of. Yes. You really can't the do that. The seaway, yeah. you can get. You, you can, can walk get back through there. Yeah, but if you're driving a car, you're going to be coming on Cudworth to get there, most likely. Right. Most likely, yes. Okay. Because um, that was one thing in thinking about you know solving the directional issue I agree that it, and it makes sense to to look at honor what it was before but if we can combine it with some sort of clear directional just like we did with North Situate playground maybe it's the Cudworth Memorial and Cudworth Field or something that makes it very clear where the location is might be a way to go who are the Cudworths John do you know that answer off the top I look of my at you head. You're a local historian. Maybe well, somebody else knows. Taking Sorry, the tour, Sean, I believe. You know. Sean went to high school with him, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Knew that was coming. I don't have a. I have to ask if Dave Ball is just local curious. society okay. for a better. I know that um, they played an important role with, I believe, religious freedom because they had um, people, um, their services on the second floor um, and different other aspects and, and, and at the, you know, in the house. I believe it was built in the late 1700s. I don't think it's the 1600s, but um, but I'm not really sure. No. I asked only just to see if you could make some sort of you got me relationship. On that one. I know you usually know all those answers. <laughs> uh, Sean, did you have any questions? No, no. You have to do something though to, to so people coming from out of town can distinguish where they're going. So by the time they get to the right spot, the game's half over. If not <laughs> over. So Tony. Yeah, I I think. We talked about it at the last meeting. You know, I think it's a, gr a good idea. I, I think the veterans aspect of the gym is great, if, especially if it was already dedicated in that honor. Um, the field, I'd like to think about that a little bit, I, but I agree with Maura that it's got to be named something. Mm -hmm. um, and that whole area, you know, something's going to happen in the next six months in terms of when the senior center and a lot's going to go on there and we're going to figure out what's going on. <coughs> I think we should just incorporate that field to, into that as well. That you know, because we don't even know what the layout's going to be. You know, the field may be much less, you know, we don't know. So until we get the drawings back and mm -hmm. see if it's a, a track, maybe it ends up just being a track or maybe it ends up being a baseball field and it may be a different naming purpose. So 
And both my parents are veterans, so it's, it's a nice honor if you do something like that for Jim. I, I totally agree. It kind of got buried. I think it did get buried, and I think it's time to resurface. <laughs> well, was it back in 2010? My children were going there at the time. They did some kind of dedication at the same time. Might have been the floor, because that's, that's what I, they had redone the floor. Over Thanksgiving. Over Thanksgiving, it was for free. And I remember going to the rededication on the gymnasium floor okay. for it. But that's a prime example where, right. and that's why I think the designation's <laughs> got to be actually on the building. You've got to have a name on the building so people don't forget it and have it yes. slip through the cracks. I agree. So what are you thinking? Uh, Situate Veterans Memorial Gymnasium? Is that, or Veterans Memorial Gymnasium? What were your thoughts? You know, I, what, I initially thought the Veterans Gym. Veterans what was Memorial. it named? What was, it was actually the intent initially? The intent was the Situate High School pays homage to the memory of the veter uh, to the veterans of World War II. That's what it was for. To our hero dead in World War II. That's what the gym was for. And well, I like your idea. Veterans that Memorial Gym. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think it's appropriate given that the you know right across the street is where we have all of the monuments and and the and the so cemetery, the cemetery next door. So. I think it all makes a lot of sense for our town common. Um, I don't know what the naming should be. So after we decide that, would you recommend like a plaque, a bronze plaque or something on the building, John? I, I certainly think one thing we should do is put a sign, a, a fairly large sign that designates this as, so people know it, mm -hmm. um, separate and apart. I think you should have uh, recognition for the sign with this town of Situate Rec Department. You know, just like I assume we're going to have one with the Board of Health, so people are going to identify right, it. Right. But I think I think really the, the way to do it proper would be to put it literally on the building, so that when you drive by, you see it, right. and then people are going to it's going to pick up in the vernacular, and people are going to know it right, right away for what it is. You can actually name the road too. Yeah, that's a good idea. I pulled the newspaper article. It was originally named the Memorial Gym. Memorial Gym. Yeah. It was what Veterans Memorial Gym. No, just Memorial. The Memorial Gym. Was the original name based on this newspaper article from 2000? What what year is that? 2010. This 2000. newspaper article is 2010. Do what do you think of the idea of Cutworth Memorial to to tie it to the location, or is that just diminishing what you want to do? I, I think just my personal preference would be, um, I think we do it to the to the veterans. You know, yeah. I, I obviously it was clearly dedicated to the, the men who, and women, but in this case, the men who, who died in World War II. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think that, you know, if the high school is going to maintain the plaque in the high school, then, you know, my feeling on it is let's maintain the dedication of the gym to veterans, all active and all those who've served peacetime and in war. I think it would be an honor to all of them for their service. And, you know, mm -hmm. we could, you know, I know that, I don't know how this would work. I know the veterans, the, what do you call it, the, um, American Legion was talking about at some point having like a wall, um, but you know I, I've seen it. Maybe there's something that we could tie in, in the future. There. Sure. You know, as a project for okay. for all the okay. various people who've died and you know to memorialize them. All right. So do we think the Veterans Memorial Gym or Situate Veterans Memorial Gym? The Veterans Memorial Gym, I think, is the great. All right. Somebody want to make a motion? You know what? I'd like to. Do you want to wait and think about it? Yeah, I'd like. Well. Maybe Ruth will put something on the paper, and maybe people will have opinions and didn't come to the meeting yeah. tonight. Yeah. So maybe we just get it out there and vote on it next week. I'm fine with that. Yeah. You're, you're okay until mm -hmm. January 9th, right? I would, yeah. Just well, let it that we're inclined to go with Veterans right. Memorial. What did we say? Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. Think <laughs> that's <just laughs> veterans Memorial. Veterans Memorial. I think that's the right name. Okay. I mean, it's, that's great. So we'll, um, so folks, if anybody wants to get back to us, uh, that would be great. And um, we'll take it up on the ninth on the agenda on that and vote on it then so we can. What is the process of determine? renaming something like that, John? I was just wondering that. Just like if other things are named, I didn't know if you have to go through a process of you just renominating. Under the charter, the town side, on anything that the town has control over, not the school, okay. that the Board of Selectmen have the rights to be able to name okay. is what it is. Uh, we went through this one time with Roachfield. It actually, <coughs> now I, I feel bad, it was originally named for another individual who they now named one of the dugouts out, but now we call it Roachfield. Right. And that's why I say I think it's these things in time will get 
potentially lost without maintaining some kind of major designation of mm. what we're aiming for. Good. And then um, just before you leave, Maura, Lorraine, I don't, uh, why, why do we have to have a motion to give her permission to put so a sign on the building to identify the situate recreation? We don't need a motion for that, do we? Can't they, can't she just do that? Would they coexist? Is that what you're thinking? As a facility. Well, we want to we want yeah. to order order the sign for the building because it'll be moving in three months. Right, but we don't have to move on that, do we? Okay, I just want to make sure. When, okay. What what is the status of them moving in? <laughs> that was supposed to be. Uh, when is recreation when, yeah, moving right. in? When are the offices being relocated from one location to the next? Uh, my understanding is in January. January 2nd, I have, we have a, uh, a mover scheduled. Oh, oh good. Okay. okay, good. And uh, right now, we're just trying to tighten it up. Tighten up. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Jim looks great, by the way. Thank looks you. really good. Thank you. All right, terrific. All right, so we'll visit it on the 9th. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. It's all good. All right, Thanks thank for you. coming in. Happy holidays. You too. Happy New Year. Thank you. You too. We'll see you on the 9th. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, John. <coughs> Next on the agenda um, is a discussion and vote on 50 Countryway sewer requirements. Uh, Steve, guard? Yes. And I know Kevin Cafferty is here as well, and Brad, yeah. and Karen Joseph's here as well. How are you tonight, Steve? Good, thanks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone is well this evening. For the record, I'm attorney Steve Guard, and um, I know we're a little ahead of schedule. My client was going to be here, but Greg Morse was also going to be here, but that's okay. I can, oh. I can give you a summary of where we're, what we're asking the okay. board to look at. Not a big deal. So um, I, res I submitted a letter and some attachments to that letter, and uh, hopefully that's for you this evening if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it. This is on 50 Country Way. It's the first project to have been permitted under the Village Business Overlay District. I represented Chris Ford, who owned the property, and we got it through the permitting process. The process lasted approximately 14, 15 months. It was arduous, but it was, um, it was embraced by the town. Uh, Laura Harbottle was for the project, and we all worked through all the issues that we had. During the normal course of that project, the, the plans get sent out to the various departments, and they're reviewed, and the comments are given back to the developer, and then the engineers incorporate those comments, or I incorporate them into the special permit and whatnot. So in this case, oh, and Greg's here. Um, he got called away to Marshfield Conservation Commission so, and Peter. So, um, the, the, uh, so the, in the discussions in the process, we evaluated and calculated the uh, sewer connection fee structure based on the new version. It, although there's an existing sewer connection at the property, the, if you recall, years ago it was 5000 bucks to tie in per house for a uh, privilege fee. If there was no sewer and sewer was being put on a property or in a neighborhood, there was there's, um, there's a betterment, which is in the twenty thousand dollar range. So, these fees were calculated mm, during the 2014-15 permitting process to be approximately two hundred and um, two hundred forty thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. So, we got the project approved. The special permit was recorded. Uh, under that basis and then Mr. Genta purchased the property from Mr. Ford and began construction and whatnot based on the representation of the the special permit and then the enabling permits that we achieved. So at some point later on um, a memo came from the Department of Public Works in an analysis based on a Weston and Sampson report that was in 2016 which was post permitting of the project. It was um, suggested that the uh, calculations were $240,750, but also that the a main sewer line, uh, that it, there was a public improvement requirement in that letter, and that's to replace a pipe that is the main <coughs> sewer line over near the Rivershed property where the, um, the pump station is. So my client, it was unexpected. We were taken a bit by surprise that that would have been imposed as a condition of the property development and we estimate the cost to do that between 85 and about $100,000. It was certainly something that my client didn't, didn't understand at the time or wasn't made aware of, nor were we made aware of during the permitting process. So, so we're here this evening to ask the board in their capacity as sewer commissioners to reconsider that particular imposition on this one specific project. 
as I'm sure you're all you all aware and we're hopeful that um, there will be many projects like this in the village business overlay district it is uh, a, it's a great project for <laughs> where it's located and it achieves the goal which is to allow some density in an area that you can have uh, a walking distance to the train and to encourage business as well because it's a mixed-use property the property itself is is going to be 30 units 16 one beds 14 two beds and there will be four affordable units uh, two and two, two, two ones and two, two bedroom units. So there is a, uh, an affordability component and advantage to, to the town for those numbers, as well as the um, small density. The capacity, or I should say the sewer flowage, is based on the Title V number of bedrooms, just like you would in a house or a subdivision. So it's really not much different than that. So uh, essentially, we're asking the U.S., the selectmen, to, cons to reconsider or to consider waiving the requirement for us to have to... Uh, make such public improvements in order for the project to proceed. Uh, I think that the way I look at the 240,000 is that's from us and I'm assuming there's going to be other projects that are I'm pretty sure are in the works that are going to be paying similar fees and that's really for the town to use that to improve the infrastructure to be able to handle the additional flow that is going to be um, the additional demand on the system. Of course the units don't they then they go on to pay the normal sewer fees on an annual basis. So anyway, that's where we're, that's where we're here to ask the board to consider. Okay. Did, um, I have one question, Steve. I'm just looking at trying to figure out the timeline. So <coughs> the um, December 15th notice to you and your client uh, from 2016. Yeah. That outlines all the different conditions. Um, right. I believe this is, is from Kevin from the DPW. Right. Now, did you say you received that after you already got the permit or before? That's That was one piece of new information that I was just trying to understand. Yeah, so the, the permit, it's the special permit itself is dated, um, I think it's looks like it's May of 2015. And the DPWs, uh, that, which I included a copy of their <coughs> comment pack, their comment paper to us was November 15, 2013. So mm -hmm. it was all post approval um, and, you know, took us a bit by surprise. Okay. Um, does anybody have. Well, can Kevin questions? explain what's. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. You want to explain first? Sure. For any questions? <coughs> And I don't know if no Karen or Brad wants to come up from the planning board as well. <coughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Good Kevin. evening. Um, so it was approved um, through the planning board er earlier, but it was subject to review um, by DPW and meeting all their requirements. One of the things that were required from the contractor or the developer is to do a sewer <coughs> study and make sure that we <coughs> did have the volume of flow to handle these new buildings and the pipes that we have out there. So at the time, I believe we requested flow meters and some other, other miscellaneous material. Um, by the time the whole process was done, we had one of our sewer contractors that the developer paid for go do a complete study on the properties itself and look at the flows. And according to their suggestions, they were concerned about the last 60 foot of run that um, could potentially back up with the additional additional flows from this project. And that's where we came, that's where we got that from. So that's my reference to the Weston Sampson report. The, uh, my understanding from Ke talking to Kevin is that the report doesn't say that it will overflow. It says that it is nearing capacity. So and now it's not, so our position is like, well, you know, we understand that, but you know, we're putting, you're putting a huge burden on us as a, as a project uh, development you know, for something that's not, you know, that might happen, might not. So it, it's, I mean, I think that I'm not gonna disagree with Kevin that this pipe probably needs to be replaced if all these other places start to pop up and you need to be done, but that, that's really what that 250 grand from us, and I'm sure there'll be more from other developers would, would go towards, you know. Do any other people use that run of pipe? Yes, yeah. and, and in the end of this, in the summary of the Weston Sampson report, <coughs> I'll just read the item it says for you. The last pipe segment entering the Herringbrook pump station will not be able to handle the additional peak instantaneous flows in the tributary area without temporary surcharging the line. This line should be replaced with a 12-inch pipe to sufficiently increase the carrying capacity. 
So that's where we came up with that from. And you want this project to pay for the whole repair? That's 60 feet. Even though other people use it too? Well, it's, it currently works okay for the people on it now, but with the added flow, it, that's the, the added flow is putting yeah. the, the additional surcharge on it. When did this project first start? We started in November of 2013, Mr. Harris. Right, I shouldn't say November two. I, you know, I had the date in my in my file, but it, call it 2013. It's before that when we actually filed the applications for both. For, so for 2013. The so when did Weston Sampson, you know, Greenbush was first or second? I, I can't recall on the sewer expansion. My point is, yes. Yeah. Which Greenbush was what? Yeah, you were involved, Al. It was in two of the Weston and Sampson. I mean, you're talking about when was the original sewer installed? Well, it, well, like first, five, you know, six. we did the, we did Greenbush first, then we did the cliffs. Yeah. It's about 05 or 06. Oh, it was that much earlier? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when when Weston Sampson laid out the areas that they determined to be the, you know, most critical, you know, they would go down an area and they would look at areas that were going to be four maze, you know, future houses and future developments. So that's what I was just wondering if. <clears throat> they might have missed this, but if that was done in 05, this really wasn't on the radar at, the, at that time. At the so time, I think there was a, a couple of uh, sewer units there. You know, there was the large house, the that's big right. farmhouse. Five units at that, at that that's location. That's right. I know, it, I know it well. Right. And there was an empty lot behind it. Right. But I think the question before you is not, um, is the pipe necessary? It's, is the cost of the pipe Town-owned infrastructure that uh, is covered by the fees, or is it special infrastructure that should be covered additionally by the uh, developer? Um, the the change in fee structure from five thousand to fourteen thousand was <coughs> to recognize that when people are connecting to the sewer, they're they're in fact paying for some of the infrastructure that's there, or that's the right. or the um, <clears throat> improvements to the plant, improvements to pumping stations, that sort of thing. But if things happened a little bit differently, you know, I realize that the total cost of the project is divided by the number of users, right? That's how we came up with eighteen, nineteen, twenty thousand dollars. If this project was a little further along and and the engineers determined, yes, this additional work has to be done, well everyone in the Greenbush area would have to pay a little more, but it would be done once, mm -hmm. not ten years later, dug up again. Right. So when when the residents in Greenbush paid their nineteen thousand right. dollars, they were paying for those pipes to be placed that's, in the ground. That's correct. Uh, when the next uh, after the project's over, they, they were paid by Betterment. After the project's right. over, um, then anybody connecting uh, is going to pay a connection privilege fee to connect to that existing infrastructure or to pay or or to make improvements to it okay. I think the question is does the fourteen thousand dollars were we anticipating that was to provide infrastructure reimbursement and improvements right um, or was that for something else this 240 is figured at 18,000 per unit, isn't it? Through no, it's 30, 14. 14. 14. Yeah, there's a breakdown inside the package. Yeah, uh, I, I did. It's, yeah, yeah. Okay. it's, it's 14,000. All right, 14. 14. All right, okay. 14 plus per sewer unit. Credit for what right. they had paid right. prior. <clears throat> Shoni, done? Good. For, now, for now, for <laughs> now. You'll table. You'll. Uh, so, so, Mr. Gart, so let so you got your permit, and the permit says I just have to walk this through to make mm -hmm. sure I understand. You get the permit, and it says subject to review with the fire department and this, you know, all the different departments. Right. Right. So DPW comes back and says you need to do a study. We don't. We get, We got to make sure this works. Mm -hmm. And then your client <coughs> pays for that study. Mm -hmm. So was there? Was it your own, I mean, at that time, I, I would think there was a conversation about, well, if they find something, who's, you paid for the study, so 
there's a piece of information I don't quite get. Did you? What was your expectation at I, the? I I can't say that I I had in my file during the permitting process that there was a requirement that we would pay for a study at that time. I don't know where that came from. I'm looking at what I have submitted to you I, as a deep. But you guys comment. did pay for it. It's my understanding. Well, I don't know. When you say you guys, was it Mr. Ford that paid I'm for sorry, it? I'm sorry. Was it Mr. Gentle oh. paid for it? Which which one? The the previous owner or the current owner? I don't know that. You know, but I don't right? believe the town paid for it. He, he, he was paid required for. to pay for it. It's okay. The, yeah. the so. Right, so Peter oh, so paid it's prior for it. to so, his. Yeah, so that all happened after the special permit was issued. Understanding that every permit is, is subject to obtaining other permits from other parts of the town, but when, you know, departments have, they look at the project for you, we got no feedback at all in all the time that we went through the process as far as this would, this would be necessary. Um, you know, so. Um, Al, what would, if the fire department had come back and said that the lines weren't adequate to provide <coughs> this size unit um, with adequate fire protection, is there a protocol for how we enhance that? I mean, it's basically the same question. If the water lines could not provide sufficient water right. in the area. Yeah, because it was five units, they're going to 30. <coughs> they get the special permit to do it. Subject to review from the fire department. Who do you next? I don't know. It's the same. It's, I think it's the same question. Actually, uh, Karen Joseph, we kind of covered that in the permit. I okay. Mean, this is. Um, Twenty-six. The development shall obtain all necessary approvals for use of town sewer prior to scheduling a pre-construction conference. Copies shall be furnished to the planning board. So it was anticipated that. They may have to do something, <coughs> and they have to provide the proof that the sewer has the capacity. The same thing with the water. A determination of the adequacy of the existing water service for the proposed use shall be provided to the DPW for their approval prior to scheduling a pre-construction conference. Installation of all water mains and appurtenances shall be performed according to the specifications of the DPW Water Division. Any required upgrades, modifications, or connection shall be at the owner's expense. This is a condition that is basically now found in every. And that's in the permit that. That's in the permit that was okay. issued for the water. On so May sewer doesn't mention. All right. So then the other question I have is, yeah. you received this letter from DPW a year ago. So why, why is it now before us? I I, I can't answer that. We're okay. <laughs> we're just developing the property and this is coming up we're being told okay. that when did you take that we can't we get can't a water meter water meters. for the uh, construction until we resolve the, the issue with the sewer department in one moment uh, sir could you just identify yourself I'm for the sorry. record sorry. my name is Peter Genta Peter okay. Okay. I'm manager of uh, Greenbush Station LLC okay. Okay. developing the project <coughs> can, can you go Thank back you. to that one technicality you just okay. spoke about you said it said something in the special contract you said it doesn't specify this and I missed that exchange so so paragraph 27 is referring to the water as far as the way I read it paragraph 26 refers to getting all sewer permits but it doesn't mention that any sewer improvements would be at the cost of the developer or the owner okay. so and what does the sewer thing say the same thing as the water it's, I mean it says that all, that the developer should obtain all necessary approvals for use of the sewer prior to scheduling pre-construction right comments. It elaborates it on the water a little bit more detailed. By saying that you'll have to pay anything. That's correct. So that doesn't yes. say it in 26, it but it does say it in 27. Right. Yeah. It says it in, 20. in 27, it, does, it says that we would have to be responsible. To Ms. Right. Canfield's question about the water in fire protection, we would be required under 27 to make those improvements post permit. Okay. So that's under 26, it doesn't make that condition. It just says we have to get approvals. And we, you know, we. To get the approvals, we have the units, we pay the fees, we get the approvals. So I, I don't, I don't see where this is addressed here, and I don't see where we can hold Mr. Genta responsible for making public improvements um, when the, it's not like this is a signalized intersection for a specific stop and shop that's going to you, you know, for that reason. This is a sewer pipe that's existing, used by everyone in the neighborhood going to be used by this project as it have having been approved and going to be used by other projects it just seems to it seems unfair to saddle this one property owner with such a large expense to benefit the entire greenbush neighborhood for, well not the entire but the section that this is served by this pipe it would seem to me more it would seem to me to be 
uh, spread it out more evenly. And, you know, I, I've been part of the process with the privilege fees at 5000 and I was aware that these privilege fees went to fourteen. I mean, we're paying $5,000 less than the betterment amount that most of these people get for the hookup fee. So, I mean, we're really throwing in the money that it's almost like the betterment. It's pretty darn close to well, a that, betterment fee. Well, that's the intent. Yeah. And, and no, what, well, that's why the fee is what it is, is because yeah. you shouldn't get a discount for not being first. No, but you yeah, I do understand your, I do understand your point. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think the only, if I may, the only nuance here is <coughs> had had you redeveloped and just had five units, which I believe is what was there before, it wouldn't have impacted the existing pipe. But adding 25 units impacts the existing pipe mm -hmm. that even though it's <coughs> already there and servicing, I think that's the nuance here that's concerning. If you were doing five, we wouldn't be having this conversation because we wouldn't need to increase, increase the pipe at whatever level. So it's sort of a circular problem is if it, you know. I just think it, you're asking a lot of this particular <coughs> property owner to, to, to shell out for infrastructure that's really going to benefit a lot more people in this town than just this one project. So I just think it's unfair. If, if it's a, maybe it's a sliding scale where the next project comes along, pays a little too. I, I don't know how to, you know, I'm dealing with it based on the rules that you have now promulgated. So, you know, and our position is, is that the 14,000 is supposed to, per unit is supposed to go to that, you know, that, that, partic that kind of stuff. When, when, the, when the town system has reached its capacity, and yet they allow for a village business overlay district development with this kind of density, but they haven't prepared for it, it's unfair to ask a property owner to take on that, which I, I, I think we, our position is would be the town's responsibility. Again, not that and the town is charging for that. You know, they're, they're asking for these sewer connection fees in order to be able to deal with that. When did you take ownership of, or when did you buy this interest? This was, um, I don't think I have the deed in here. Yeah. Did I put the deed in here? <laughs> I'm getting old. Let's see. Uh, like two years ago. So prior to, to Pro the DPW's letter. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. In fact, we had our pre-construction meter meeting prior to the letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the report that we oh. paid for <coughs> said that we would hit 97% capacity and that it would be f sufficient flow. So we're arguing over the, 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 the extreme conditions in, in summertime that might create a problem. Right. Even though the report said we were good. The, the report recommended improving in, in, in expanding the pipe size, right? Not for the basic use of the system. It's for an extreme situation that would potentially happen, as you said, in the summertime, mm -hmm. I guess, right? Do we have that report, Kevin? As a yeah, report? it was actually in the package I sent you, and that, that wasn't the way I interpreted it. Where, where is that in the... Uh, uh, I, I don't think it's on, the, on our... It's on the last... It's on the bottom of the... Uh, if you look on the last page... <coughs> in the says, summary. In the summary, 17. the last pipe segment okay. entering the Herringbrook pump station oh, yeah. will not be able to handle additional peak instantane instantaneous flows Number? in the tributary area without temporary oh, surcharge. <coughs> Um, the line should be replaced with a 12-inch pipe temporary to sufficiently increase the carrying capacity. We're just reading the language, Steve. I, I understand. I think to Al's point, we can debate the performance standards all night. It's beyond my skill set, to be honest with you. I think that it's, it's I guess I'm just looking at it like, this is the first of what is hopefully many projects in that area. Something's going to have to be done to this pipe. I get it. The question is, is you know, should it be Mr. Genta's responsibility to do that for the town? Or can we get a deduct from the betterment fees to pay for the work that needs to be done? I mean, that that is certainly something. I mean, when I'm asking for, we'll pay the 240. Uh, obviously, we would do the pipe and take a discount for the cost of the pipe if that's if that's something the board would consider. Um, it is it is a challenging pipe, my understanding. Again, not beyond my skill set, but this pipe is about 16 feet underground, Kevin, I think. It's about 10 feet underground. 10 feet, um, so. Just to the head of the uh, pump station. Yeah, so it's it's not like it's just four feet down, you back go dig it. It's it's a, I would imagine that's a challenging dig and for a 60-foot stretch, <laughs> and, you 
you know. And this has to take place pretty soon. Well, the contractor <laughs> says it's got to wait till April because of uh, you yeah, digging up the road and missed the window no. paving. Right. No, it's actually it's not in the road. It's in the parking lot it's over at the. He, he uh, said that it was open. when he spoke with the uh, department. It was 16 feet down, and the, and the digging needed just to put the trenching in is going to encroach onto the roadway. I don't. I don't think it is, but that's something. Um, we could obviously revisit. I don't. I don't believe it's. Um, it's so where's it going to go from? It just if, if if it was replaced. If you look at the project, if you look at the pump work. station. No, if you look at the pump station, because there's a merger of a couple pipes over there. It's a little tricky. I've got it trying, but it's it's hardly readable because it's it's tiny. Um, it's the last 60 feet of pipe that goes from the manhole into the um, into the pump station that's in the Burger Bar parking lot. Right. And that 60 feet of pipe is along driftway, did you say? or in No, it's in the parking lot. Private property? We have an easement to go, to go and do that work. <coughs> for the pipe. I love that. Is that where they were working today? Norton? <laughs> no, Norton. All right, okay. They were, all right, okay. They were. <laughs> so just out of curiosity, is it going from like uh, Ford Place to the pump station, or is it going from the pump station to driftway? That's going from the trip. pump station towards Driftway, but not all the way out to Driftway. It goes out 60 feet. <clears throat> was this originally put in when we the town had taken it and, and put the pump station there? Yep. So when they initially did it, they put 8, eight inches as opposed to a 12 inch. Um, Karen, I have a question for you. I, I saw paragraph 26 and 27. Are there any other paragraphs that indicate within the special permit site? I haven't had a chance to really review it. That indicates that the... Um, applicant is obligated to, for costs the way it was written in paragraph 27. Now that it's in 27, if there's any upgrades with the water, the applicant <coughs> will be uh, obligated not, not to pay. Not for costs, but the applicant is obligated to do many other things yeah. as part of special but Nothing to, the, specifically, to specifically to say uh, the way it was written. Costs, right. Okay. Um. It's really kind of a tricky situation because I see your point. You know, clearly that that's in there to say if it doesn't meet qualifications and you got to pay to fix it and then I think if from another perspective if you had been on the betterment replacing that pipe would have been part of the betterment and that's what your two hundred forty thousand dollars would have gone towards you know replacing making the whole system up to mm -hmm. to par um, so it wasn't if I may on that wasn't this property on the betterment when sewer went in I'm, I'm assuming Chris Ford paid the betterment fee because he owned 50 Country Way. He paid the betterment fee. That's what the five, credit. For the five. For five of them. Right, yeah. right, right. So right. So I'm it. saying if it was a 30 oh, yeah, yeah, something yeah. unit good, project, good. Okay. then now you would have paid $240,000 and it, the flow would have come out and it would have said yeah, it's more have, and you would have replaced it. Five grand more, right? So the way I see it, and I know, Steve, you may disagree with me on this. <coughs> when an applicant such as your client decides that they want to bring in a new use and uh, augment the use in this case expanding from 5 to 30 30 yes 30, 30 units um, you know that's this whole special process special permit process which does get into maybe you do need to improve certain facets it's not just paying for the uh, betterment or the improvement uh, or the privilege fee it's it's also there are costs associated it could be like a, a light or an intersection that directly impacts it but they also go off sites in other areas in other towns so um, I do see in this that I could easily say, no, the applicant should be paying for it. Um, the one thing that I that kind of troubles me, and, and, and Karen, this isn't to you, but when you write in a, um, a special permit, specifically if it's going to be improvement to water, it shall be at the owner's expense, it's not listed in the sewage. Um, I'd feel much more comfortable saying it should have been in the sewage, because if it's in the sewage, I would say, Fair warning. Now, Mr. We wouldn't um, be here. G Gator? <laughs> Genta, I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Genta is buying the project from Ford, and from at some point, <coughs> the due diligence is going to be on the applicant or the person who's buying the project. And if there's something mistaken, then I'm sorry, that's on your end of things because from the town side, it's pretty crystal clear. I think. I will say, though, it's not as crystal clear because I didn't see this language mm -hmm. that you raised with paragraph 27 and 26. Um, 
my feeling on it is, and maybe because I'm looking at it legally, is I'm saying, well, if I were sitting here, it says it's at the owner's expense of water. It doesn't say that with sewage. I do understand where you're coming from. Um, the 240 is going to be paid, though, regardless. That's irrelevant to this discussion. Right. Um, it's a question of whether or not, do we know what the cost of the 60 f feet of pipe is an estimate? We've, we've been told it's 85 to 100,000. 85 to 100,000, okay. What, what do you think this means, John, though? Shall obtain all necessary approvals. Well, that would be that they'd have to get all the approvals. To be able so to they, well, they're not getting an approval. <coughs> so technically they'd say, no, we're not going to approve it because the and the pipe doesn't the pipe, pipe doesn't isn't big enough. So the distinction that I would make to Mr. Danny's point, and he's absolutely correct, the if if this issue arose during the 14-month permitting period, that t set paragraph 26 would look exactly like paragraph 27, and it did. So that's why we were left with thinking that this wasn't an issue for us. We had no idea, and it wasn't until. After that was done, that Weston and Sampson report was required of us, and then it came that the pipe is near capacity, or we can debate whether it's at capacity, and then now we're getting saddled. So that would be the one distinction that I would make to Mr. Danahy's comment, that it, and I was part of that permitting process, and I know nothing in my file, no, any recollection that there was a comment that, by the way, you're going to have to replace 60 feet of pipe that's around the corner off-site. We, you know, wasn't near us, so. If I can... Just touch on that briefly, Steve. Um, it was brought up, but I believe in the early stages that there need to be a, a sewer review to make sure that the, the flows would that that would may be work. yeah. That, I'm not I'm not you know, arguing so that, but certainly it was never disclosed to us that there would be. I mean, sewer calculations for sure. We had to make sure that you know we were going to put out the right amount and the system could handle it. But it was never pointed out to us that it would have to be an improvement at the owner's cost. That's all. That's my point. To that well, extent. Yeah. What did, what did you think that letter meant, the, the December 16th letter meant, if it was a condition? The December 16th letter meant we had to pay for the pipe. <laughs> and that was after the approval. In addition to the time. Yeah, in right, addition to yeah. the 240000 and change. Right, that but that was, was a year ago. Yeah. That's I just I'm a little conf confused why it's coming to our attention now. It, it's been around a long. This project, you know, was in the permit no, process know, for a long time, so it's understandable that getting a handle on a timeline is not <coughs> easy to achieve. So confused. Okay. Did you have all the approvals I, prior to the pre-construction conference? I, that I don't know. That lawyers step out once the pre-construction you know, meetings start to happen, so I do not know that. When was the pre? When was the pre-construction conference? Do we know? Remember? It was just before demolition, so it would have been around uh, the end of last year. Okay. I guess that's when I'm going to paragraph 26. All necessary approvals, because I want to know: Did you get your approvals? And then this popped up. Do we have an answer on that? I don't know. The, I, I do know that Mr. Morris had mul lots of conversations. He was the project engineer, and he was lots of conversations with different town departments throughout the process, and maybe he could speak to how that went. And you were probably at the pre-construction meeting, I would imagine. Sure, so. I was. Uh, during, during the permitting of this project, I've been on this project since 2012. For the record, it's Gregory Morse, registered engineer, Morse engineering. Um, during the permitting through the whole planning board process, we submitted multiple sets of plans. Typically when we file an application, you submit in excess of a dozen sets of plans, and those are distributed to all of the <coughs> town departments for review and comment. We received comments from the DPW. We received very specific comments with respect <coughs> to the water at the site. We went out, we conducted additional hydrant flow testing because there was concern on the water pressure and quality that was all done during the public hearing process and we were able to address it at that time we also were aware that with this type of project there was going to be significant fees associated with the sewer $240,000 we have met with the super um, the, the, D, the DPW head at that time um, we discussed the fees with him um, None of the correspondence we've ever seen from the Department of Public Works or anything from the sewer department during the public hearing process, which was in excess of a year-long period, included any notation or any inclination that there would be any upgrade to <coughs> public sewer pipes outside of this project. 
Furthermore, I want to add that there have been several other projects in the Greenbush area permitted after this mm -hmm. that have not been required to do off-site infrastructure, that have maybe not 30 units capacity, but they have increased capacity as well. These off-site studies have not been required. They have simply paid the uh, betterments associated with the connection. Uh, I, I can understand Mr. Genta's reasoning for asking for this. This was never brought to his attention until after he permitted what he considered a fully permitted project. He had a special permit that was issued that had been vetted in excess of a year through the town boards. Uh, he had correspondence from the DPW. <coughs> Again, nothing relating to off-site improvements that are approaching $100,000 in excess of his purchase. Uh, I attended the pre-construction conference. <coughs> Obviously, the sewer connection wasn't granted prior to that. Uh, hearing. I was at the site with Laura Harbaugh, the town planner at that time, uh, the site contractor, and I believe Peter was there as well. Mm -hmm. um, Karen? I'd, I'd like to just clarify the um, notes that I have in the planning board file say the pre construction meeting was dated 1 17, 2017. Okay. You mean after this letter? So, so after, after the memo, was, the memo yeah. was put together on 12 15, six, 12, 15 16, okay. that it was. So issued three weeks later roughly the pre-construction meeting was three weeks later. so when was when was the developer told that they had to get this special testing done when were they were told that they had to go and hire the consultant or pay for the consultant to do the flow testing um pretty early on i don't have the exact dates but pretty early on there was requests in in the conversation at 15 16 what? Well, what's the date of the study i don't it was done in uh, a couple After months before the, your memo came out right <laughs> after Mr. Genta bought the property. Yeah. It was never brought up during Chris Ford's permitting process. After the permitting mm -hmm. process and before the pre-construction. But you knew that you had to pay for a consultant to look at the flow of the of the sewage. Well, I was asked after yeah. purchasing the property that that well, was. Yeah, case. well, you bought it with, so Mr. Ford knew that he had to pay for that. No, he, no, he did not. No. no. This was, this was, Mr. Genta was made aware two months prior to the pre-construction meeting. That he had to pay for the study. How did that go? Pay for the happened? study. Yeah. Do you remember this the whole file and everything we had on this? Like Greg says, there were comments along yeah. the way. There were a lot of comments on the way, and without without having that, I know we went back. <coughs> one of my engineers was reviewing the project, Danny, um, and he wrote a whole specification on what he was looking for. It included flow meters and, and other miscellaneous stuff to look at it. Um, just try to figure out where the flow was to make sure we could handle it one way or the other. Um, instead, the calculations were, were based accordingly. But that was that was a ways back. I couldn't give you those dates without talking to Dan. All right. All right, but with Weston and Samson, the memo came out on December 13th, 16, and then you referenced that in the letter you sent to them. December 15th and then you didn't meet your pre-construction for another two weeks so you you did have this information that's that's the what's okay well it just comes back to the same question though hmm. so are, are we in agreement that you had the information <laughs> that the pipe needed to be replaced at the pre-construction meeting that to me seems to be sort of the a couple weeks before, it sounds like. I had uh, the, the, the information that it was re requested that it be replaced. Okay. But we also had the report saying that there was sufficient flow with the project that it, you know, to be under the 97% of the flow. And at the pre-construction meeting, did the notes just, I'm sorry to re, yeah. you know, rehash this, but did the notes um, clearly state that they had to absorb the cost for the replacement of that 12-inch pipe, Karen? It's not mentioned at all in the pre-construction conference notes. It's not, okay. It says in the memo. Um, I know it's in the, uh, your memo on the 16th. Yeah, the 12th. Yeah, the 12th. Yep. I know it's on there, yep. <coughs> Sean, did you have any other further thoughts? I don't know. No, not, not right now. It's okay. just I'm going back and forth. I yep. just, I don't know how something like this happens. It shouldn't happen. Well, I think, you know, just sort of listening to all the conversation, um, 
there, it seems to be a little blurry with the way, <coughs> and, and this is, I'm not judging, but just looking at paragraph 26 and 27 in the, in the detail in the language with regards to sewer and with regards to water is very different with regards to that paying, you know, paying for it. Um, I don't know if that's <coughs> customary. I, I'm not an expert with the planning language. Um, if typically each area is usually more detailed, you know, with regards to costs, um, I can see how it's a little blurry. Um, but I also know it's subject to all the conditions that the that the DPW, you know, provides to to yeah. builders. Can I ask just one more question? <laughs> no. Sorry. So is this just so did this just not really get on your radar because of sequencing of construction that it was off site? I mean, I, if you, you knew about this, it says clearly in this memo before you had your pre-construction, it was at your cost. I was under the impression it was a negotiation. Okay. This request. And had there been follow up since between now, th between the issuance of this letter and this day? No, I was. Well, I mean, was there a negotiation? That's the question. There, there weren't any. There were discussions. There were about, discussions. There were discussions okay. about the letter itself, but you know, I didn't. We weren't okay. in negotiation. Yeah, you're in the eleventh and a half hour. That's a concern too. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, this does this development is something that is you know valued in the overlay district, obviously, but. Um, so what did you think was going to happen? Clearly you knew there was an issue and there was some negotiation that was due. I was under the impression that the $250,000, quarter of a million dollars, goes toward to the town for future improvements to the system, this being one of them. And when I heard that the cost was eighty to 100000 I figured, okay, no brainer. 250000 put 80000 toward the project, and there's a surplus. Mm. Mr. Genter thought that, that, the, that he'd get a credit for the 80000 too. He had a, but then when I read the memo with him and I said, no, that's not what it says. It says it's in addition to the two. I was taken down. back when they told me that you didn't have a contractor and they wanted me to do the work. I yeah. had no idea how to do the work. <laughs> that was, that threw me for a loop. Yeah. All right. What, what does it boil down to? I, I, it's, it's in the beginning, but you have 32 units. 32 oh. sewer connections. 30. 30. Well, well then you have a retail. Yeah, and you, right, so yeah. Uh, so yeah I'm sorry, 30 residential. 30 residential and 6,000 of uh, yeah. All right. commercial space. Commercial. Okay. And, um, divide it by 240,000. All right. Comes out to about 8,000, 9,000, eight, about $8,000. Mm -hmm. uh, where do, what, you know, John, myself, we pay $18,000 per hookup fee. Where does that, you know, how, how do you get from what we're looking to 18000 I can explain sure. that. Yeah. Um, first of all, they received credits for five. For the five. They already oh, paid so five nineteen five, five right. nineteen thousand. Okay. And secondly, uh, in the sewer rules and regulations, an, a, a one-bedroom apartment is considered one half of a sewer unit. Okay. Right. And then a two-bedroom apartment is considered a full sewer That's unit. Right. I forgot that. So, okay. um, so. I think... So they're paying their fair share, just yes, like that's anyone else. That's they're paying as per really that, that fee is yeah. as per the, um, <coughs> and that as um, Mr. Morris said, uh, that was made known to the previous owner through discussions about how many units would there be, what size would they be, if they're apartments versus condos, mm -hmm. stores, all that um, uh, was all worked out in advance. The, you know, it's typical in a special permit hearing process for the town to ask for, understand if, uh, if an intersection needs to be improved, if a traffic light needs to be installed, if a sidewalk um, or a crosswalk needs to be installed, um, if water pipes need to be uh, upgraded, <coughs> hydrants need to be installed in public infrastructure, and that is uh, worked out in the course of the planning process, made known to the applicant, uh, discussed with the board, uh, uh, and then ultimately written into the permit. And at the time that the permit is issued, it would say you need to install a crosswalk or a, uh, a radar speed sign or fix an intersection. In this permit, 
Um, and again, going back to, uh, to Mr. Danahy's comments, um, it, it, it lays out a number of things that the developer must do to put this project in place, one of which is Article 27, uh, determine the adequacy of the existing water system, and it spells out in exquisite detail who will pay for what. Mm -hmm. In referencing the sewer, um, there isn't that degree <coughs> of data. So you could say that there's, a, there's an expectation that I'll fix the intersection, I will um, install some sidewalks, I will improve, uh, study and improve <coughs> the water line. Uh, there isn't necessarily an expectation. Since everything else is so explicit, mm -hmm. that's not explicit. So there isn't necessarily the expectation for the permit holder that um, they would be paying for infrastructure. That might be one way to look at this. And, and maybe we need to do, uh, we'll, I'm, I'm sure that will be taken into account in subsequent special permit hearings. Hmm. It's not a planning board fault, it's just new, sewer is kind of new in this area. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess the other way to look at it is that they're not approved, so they can't do the project. I'm sorry? I guess the other way to look at it is they're not approved and they can't do the project. They can't hook up, right? Yeah, but. Well, they'd have to scale back. Right. You know, so that's, I mean, that's kind of what it reads as well. You need to, you need to get all the necessary approvals and they don't. So. So it's muddy. When do you tell them, when they point to the permitting process, what approval requires? Mm hmm Yeah. yeah. <coughs> well. well um, is yeah, it, well, I'm just wondering if this is something that we negotiate and we we come to some understanding. Does it sound remind you at all like the project um, Eddie McLaughlin, Steve Bajorklin did, Sam Tilden's farm? Does it? Did, do you have any flashbacks? I mean, that was a. Absolutely. All right, so they needed they needed you know increase in water. water lines, right? Yeah, and, and pressure might have been low. So we partnered with them, and they ran a larger line from. Also, the Hennessy property. You remember the Hennessy yes. property partnering. Uh, right, right. So, so we partnered talk with about, them. They didn't pay full cost. We saw negotiations. They did the construction with our engineers, the approvals. They did it much, you mm -hmm. know, not at prevailing rates. So, you know, they could just, you know, private people can do things less expensive than we can. You know, is this one of those situations? I was listening to what Tony said earlier, and I can see exactly where they're coming from. But yet, you know, just want to make it kind of fair across the board. So, yeah, I'm sorry to cut you off, but <laughs> were we thinking the right way here? And yeah, well, it was specified. Right. Really, it couldn't go forward with the project and the permit right. would not but be But that issued. was during the permitting well, process. specific things were right. done. They're painting <laughs> now, though. Yeah, and that's... They're hanging <laughs> curtains, you know, pretty much. <laughs> right. you know. Those were during the permitting process, not... Right. right. You know, I have another question, and... and I mean, this was permitted by the planning board. Is this, I mean, is, is this our decision just because we're the sewer commissioners or? Yes, right. Okay, mm -hmm. I just didn't know just because, you know, the planning board are the ones that permitted the project. Does anybody else from the planning board, I see a couple of members out there, have any comments or statements? Nope, seeing none. All right. Um, well. <laughs> I don't know if somebody wants to make a motion and we can, I don't know if we have to decide this evening, um, we need to think about it. Uh, I'd find somebody. It's not, to me, it's not black and white, um, unfortunately. Hmm. Wish it were. Thank you for walking us through that because yeah. it is complicated. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Gent is not opposed to understanding the nuances of the town having to undertake the project and the cost of the town. He's not opposed to on if the board was uh, would see fit to allow that to take the project on for a credit for the actual cost of the project, maybe much like the Bjorkland where they did the work and then you partnered with them. He would figure out exactly what it's going to cost and then take a credit on the 240, you know, the sewer fees or something to do that. If that would make sense, I think, and he would supervise and manage it with, of course, you know, the town engineer's uh, guidance and advice on how to do it, because he's not a drain layer, but Kevin says he can become one pretty quickly if we need to, so I think he would offer to do that. Well, that's not what the other ones were, right? Not as a credit on the two, <coughs> like the 240 is, is revenue that's coming to the town, 
Oh, I understand. Regardless, right? No, no, I, well, yeah. I, well I'll, I'm. Yeah. It, you mentioned negotiation. No, no, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just I, suggesting that maybe there is a way that we can meet in the middle here and get away from the gray and the fuzziness of paragraph 26. And and my position and your position comes closer together. <coughs> Mr. Genta is he's a contractor. He gets the job done. He gets it done. But we need, you know, we. I'm suggesting that. You know, we we get compensated through a reduction of the fees that are charged for the sewer connection fee as a credit or something like that. It, it is cheaper for the developer to do the project <coughs> than it is for the town to do the project, for a number of different reasons. It would be literally an in, like the cost invoice. Mm -hmm. Here's the invoice from the drain layer, whatever it is. You know, mm -hmm. wouldn't be marked up, wouldn't be managed. You'd, you'd take on the project and do that. I think that's part of. Given what I'm looking at, I think that's a pretty fair result. In you know, from our perspective. Um, we want to see the pipe improved for everybody's benefit, but not at our sole cost. You know, so right. we don't want to be it next summer and another project comes before you, and now all of a sudden, well, we're no, I don't want to be at the Burger Barn mm -hmm. having them so call me that so they've got a problem in the building. Yeah. Right, and we are. We do have three buildings that we're phasing in. Right. So it's, oh, okay. it's so so right now <coughs> the first two buildings shouldn't be a problem. It's the last building that won't happen until the springtime. <coughs> so and it might be easier to do the work so he's off for sure. without winter conditions too. Right, and peak is in the summer, I assume. So for that to happen, though, we have to have a conversation with Kevin and the DPW about getting water meters for one building at a time. I mean, he is phasing the construction. That's the way we actually set mm -hmm. it up permitting-wise. And if that's amenable, then we could reserve doing this pipe upgrade until you know the ground thaws in the spring and do it at the lap before the last building. You, in other words, if you voted for this. The condition would be that we wouldn't get what and occupancy permit for the last building. So it doesn't so hold up the sale. Right, you right. Sale if we get the first two buildings up and running, and there's cash flow. That yeah. makes it a lot easier to. Are these? I'm sorry. Are these are rental condos. Rental. They're, they're all rentals. rentals. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I thought so. I just wasn't sure. Until the third building's in place. Okay. Right. 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 And I will yeah. some yeah. Credit thing isn't paid. No, there is a sequence of construction that was agreed to yeah. as part of this whole thing. And so certain uh, buildings B and C um, have to be done but and but he's going to do it weather before. tight before occupancy is granted. But why would we? Okay. So here's what we, we have our only time to say no, yep. give us a 240 okay. and you pay 85. Did you have something so you two want? Water meters for each <laughs> water meter for each unit, for yeah, each, building. each building, each building, yeah, because they're they're part. We so we don't have to meter it. each cost. Total cost is going to be twenty five. Just one bill, one for each building. We need the water turned on just to finish construction. We need the water turned on to have the hydrants. I'm saying right. right. the hydrants are alive should there an accident take place. Yeah. Because they don't want to turn the water on because of the sewer the issue hasn't been Yeah. Done. So instead of being 325, it's a life safety 260. Issue, yeah, right. Right. Well, I, I spoke uh, to the fire chief okay. about that, and we do have a hydrant within 500 feet there. I There's no way we're think, I don't know if we've received all the as built and everything else for the water line, um, but we can we can talk about that afterwards. We don't, sure. have, to, we don't have to get into that <coughs> now. The nearest hydrant. Um, there's a hydrant. There's a hydrant on Ford Place, and there's another hydrant on Country Way there, I believe. I talked to the chief about it, and he said he was covered with the hydrants he had. Nursing yeah. Wow. Well, you've got two on site that are ready to go. Ready to go. Right. That's, yeah. Turn them on. Three on site. Yeah. I mean, it's not yeah. a steel build. We can't, we can't yeah. occupy these buildings right. until we get all the approvals, so I, I don't know why. Just turn the water on. <laughs> to me, that's a no-brainer. All right, so um, there's been some calculations going on up here, left and right. Um, what are thoughts? I think I think what I'm sensing, and obviously everybody can go to a vote here, that there's an inclination to to negotiate. Um, thoughts with regards to sharing <coughs> the cost um, with them, you know, I don't know, 50 percent just to be equal. Um, whatever the cost is, the estimate that comes in based on your better pricing um, for the work. So we agree to, you know, 50 percent. I don't you know, is that something the board would entertain? <coughs> I guess, I guess in response to the 50 percent, I'm thinking about the neighborhood on that side and I'm thinking about the different spots that are going to have projects. It would seem to me that there are probably at least three other you know, viable sites that will probably have density even greater than ours. That maybe, maybe the maybe the number is 25 percent. You know, what I mean, instead of 50, because there are, I can, I'm thinking of three, and you probably know which ones I'm talking about. 
um, that are around us that will likely be coming forward with those types of applications. So I think 50 is a little steep for, for my liking because it's half the cost for the benefit of the other projects that will come through. And then during that permitting process, you can, you know, you can have that discussion about assessing them, I guess, or well, the pipe will be done. So <laughs> I don't know how you get away with that. And, but and if I could bring up and just comment on that, if, if there is <coughs> another large project going in, they'll do a similar sewer evaluation and maybe another pipe that now that you flow into would have the additional flows that would cause them to increase some other pipes along yeah, the way. We're gonna not put just that one. We're going to put this pipe in so it can handle whatever the, the village business overlay district requires, right? I mean, what's right. the point? We're going to dig it right. up. Let's put in a pipe that works. Right, you know, but what I'm saying is capacity. the pipes prior to that 60 feet back to its yard, you know, you're using up a volume in that yeah, sewer pipe. At least one of the projects that I'm thinking of is downstream of us of that. You know what I mean? It's, it's on the other side of, the, of us, meaning towards the, the river mm -hmm. shed. Anyway, that, that was, and I haven't talked to my client about this. I'm right. just suggesting that. Why don't, why don't you make so the, the next step and find out what it's going to cost you to, mm -hmm. to do the project? And then we can talk about some sort of cost sharing on that and give you a credit maybe on the 240 on some percentage of that. Okay. Is that fair? Does that sound fair to you? Yeah. yeah. It, we, we can do that just with the holidays and all. And, and uh, I'm not sure what time frame that's going to take. Mm -hmm. But can we at least agree to get the water turned on for the fire departments and get a meter over to the Can first we get building? a meter for the first building or two while we do that? I don't see why not. I, I have to check with the water department, make sure uh, Raleigh has built in for the water lines and everything else all completed, all the requirements. We, we gave in preliminary as built, final as built have not been prepared yet because all the connections have not been made, but the preliminary ones are done. And the water department has them? I believe so. I'll, I'll talk to the water department tomorrow. Yeah, we'll, we'll comply with whatever they're yeah, looking yeah, for, yeah. at we'll least at this stage of our construction and, and evaluation. Yep. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah, all right, no that makes sense. And would you just want me to build the first building, the first phase right now? Yeah, yeah. 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 First well, two, we buildings. two buildings are under yeah. construction. Right, right. Yeah. They need water to for fire safety and to finish the construction, and plastering and everything. Test else. the connections on the right. plumbing, and plumbing and stuff. So. All right, so you'll come back with us to us. Sure. With an estimate. We'll get that number on the ninth. We could put, put it on the ninth. Yeah. Can we put, yeah. put you on the next meeting, the ninth? Okay. That's okay. Fast enough for you? Yeah. Yeah. And you'll be able to get the cost estimate. Well, Mr. Harris, well, I comment? need uh, who's the right person to talk to in the sewer department for the specs no. of that? Um, to be done. I, I want to make sure you are talking to the right person. 95 seems steep mm -hmm. to me, yeah. but um, and I want to make sure we're talking about the same line. Yep. The line that's outlined in this memo is 60 feet from the pump station. Yeah. There's nothing on Ford Place, nothing to that yeah. area. So I want to make sure there's no confusion on that. Yeah, yeah. We're just looking at the one line. It was just when my co my contractor, Mike McDougall, talked to somebody in your department. Okay. He was under the impression it was 16 feet down. All right, so let's just I, make we'll sure. We'll figure that out. that away. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Makes so a big we'll difference. Exactly we'll figure out. My what understanding was, and I looked in the manuals, it was 10 feet. So we'll. Okay. Good. That's a big we'll, difference. Okay. It, that's a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's half that. It's yeah. spinning. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, if that's the case. Hopefully. We'll be back on the 9th. The 9th. We'll put you on the agenda on the 9th, right, Lorraine? Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Okay. Thank you for nice. coming in. By the way, I vote for Hi. Veterans Memorial Gym. Just, you know, my two cents. <laughs> 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 All right, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. All right, thank, thank you, you, Karen. Can I run down the hall, ma'am? Uh, yes. Do you want to take a five-minute break? Yeah, maybe just a break. Uh, we're just going to take a five-minute break, and we'll resume in five minutes.
Uh, we're going to resume our meeting. Uh, discussion vote on DPW contracts. Kevin, Sean? Um, yes, thank you. We have um, three contracts before you tonight. The first one is for the engineering and design of Phase 3C water main replacement, um, which is basically the last hurrah for the water projects. Um, it includes Oceanside Drive, which is the replacement of that water line. We put that off because we had all the seawall activity. We couldn't do it all at once in there. And the other thing we have is service transfers on Booth Hill Road, Gannett Road, Man Lot, and Ocean Ave. And basically what that is, is there was an original pipe put in, say, 1920, and then they put a new pipe in because they're having problems with the older pipe in, say, 1950, 1960. But... Um, the issue that they had is they they put the services on one side of the road to the newer pipe and they left the older services on the old pipe so we still have two pipes in that road so the idea is what we're going to do is take the services off the old pipe and put them on the newer pipe and, and deactivate the old pipes so you have to bring it across the entire road yes that's well there's a reason lot, there that's on all of them it's, it's on, on Booth Hill Gannett Manlot and uh, Ocean Ave Ocean Ave Okay. And uh, this is for the design, and when do you anticipate actually doing the work? Um, with any luck, spring, summer, and, and, you know, we'll get this going again. Okay. Oh, no, we're digging up Gannett Road from Country Way to Hadley. Is that where it's going to? From Country Way to Hadley, just the services going across. So half. The full water replacement is down Oceanside Drive. All right, so First the, is the road going to be totally dug up again after we just paved it? No, long. we didn't just pave that. Oh, That's Country Way, uh, Gannett Road? Okay. That we had recently, didn't we? We paved from Hatherley to Glades Road with the Musquash Katsua project. Okay. I just thought we redid Gannett recently. With, with, with the sidewalks? The, uh, yeah, with the sidewalk. We, we did, did the walk, sidewalk. Trail. The trail, yeah. we did the trails on the sidewalk. And we didn't do the road at that time? We didn't do the road. And this would be halfway across? It'll be halfway across to wherever the other pipe falls. Kevin, um, I asked you <laughs> last time before we started 123. I mean, I was, I am all in favor of it. The, the water up, you know, the, the water lines to be replaced. But it's getting old driving around town. You know, we either, and you said we were just going to do this one, you know, and here we are going to, and I'm talking about the, I'm not talking about so much the laterals as if that's what it is, but talking about just taking a, doing another phase. You know, I know it's real important, but the, the roads are terrible. We, you know, we just tell me, give me a plan or something. Tell me when these things are going to be, you know, done. It's, it's just, morning. you know. Basically, our plan is in the springtime, we're going to hit um, a, a lot of roads. Um, I think we're doing them almost six miles of roads that we're going to be paving in the spring. Okay. We're going to do 123. Yeah. We're going to do Baca Road. All the roads that were affected in the last water project, um, we delayed paving those roads, unfortunately, because of the drought. Um, we, we weren't able to charge the lines with water, so we weren't able to do the connections until this year. So we did the connections this year, and, and we're letting them settle out. Um, so yes, there, there is a lot of areas that we need to pave, and, and you know, in the spring, I hope you can, you know, people are complaining because it's too busy because we're paving everywhere. Right. That's, but that's they, our move, they move so fast, so you get some detours and people get a little aggravated, but the, the next day. day, you know, Tilcon or T.L. Edwards, they're gone, and next thing you know, you have a, you know. They grind the road and then they come back and do it. And, right. and we're looking at each street. There's some streets like Baca Road, um, the thickness is only two inches thick. We don't have enough to grind, so what we're going to do is we'll overlay it and raise the castings up accordingly. Um, and we'll take care of all the roads and get them fixed you know a lot of those roads will get fixed up okay when so you get the final list will you uh, let us have that so we can let people oh yeah no it. gladly we can put yeah. it on the we can put on the website yeah, that's that's not a problem the be streets a good we plan on doing <laughs> all right so you had two bids one late one for forty eight thousand two hundred and the other one one hundred and fifty one thousand obviously they didn't want to do the job so we went with the forty eight thousand dollar one <laughs> So that's, I mean, they're the only ones that qualified. 
They were the only ones that met all the requirements. Um, and, and you know what? It's just like anything now. A lot of these engineering firms are really busy. Um, in, yes, and they just can't take on the work at this time. All right. Any other questions with regards to the design? Do I have a motion? Move yes. that the Okay. Move that the Board of Selectmen award the contract for engineering design services for phase three water main design to Weston and Sampson of Peabody Mass for the amount not to exceed $48,200. Second. Moved by Ms. Canfield, second by Ms. Vignani. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next one Excellent. is for the MS4 storm water, water management. Um, yes, so. The DEP put in some new regulations, DEP and EPA, um, a couple years ago about MS4, uh, which is basically a stormwater. And just like every street has catch basins, so square covers that you have, the drain water goes into there, and then it goes out to either swamp, marsh, wetlands, mm -hmm. or a river, or even the ocean. Um, so one of the requirements is we have to make a lot of updates to our um, system just to comply um, with DEP and EPA regulations. So the state actually has given a year leniency on this, but we're going after it now so that we're in compliance <laughs> when the new term comes up. So Sean put together an RFP and he's kind of been heading this up. Um, if you have any specific questions, I'll, I can let him answer it. I know it's something that the town has known is going to be coming forward um, over the last few years. They have set aside some money anticipating um, these new requirements from the EPA. Um, we've already started implementing um, some of the improvements like the storm scepter that was installed at the highway department. Um, so some of the discharges that already exist, we've made improvements to. The EPA is going to want to see mapping, um, GIS mapping and locations, um, testing of what's coming out of them, um, whether people's um, washer machines are hooked up to some pumps that end up in catch basins that end up down the river. Um, it's going to happen over many, many years. Um, they anticipate maybe even creating a drain department um, because it's going to reach that level. Um, we'll see. They've, they've thrown that thing out and, and, and scared, I think, a lot of communities. Um, this was supposed to be in place July of last year and they got a lot of pushback uh, from the states and Mass DEP. So now it's July of the upcoming year that this notice of intent be submitted. Um, so we're kind of early in the stages, but um, we did receive some input back from the engineers who were loving this as winter projects to start to prepare these documents, um, start to update our stormwater management plan <coughs> kind of a, a guidebook to move forward in the years, what areas need to be addressed, things like that. And Horsley Witt has done a lot of drainage work. I think they have um, staff members that were part of writing the stormwater management policy for DEP in-house. Um, they put together a, a well-prepared RFP that brought it right through educating um, not only the public but the staff what they need to look for, how things are going to move forward, outreach materials, things like that. So a thorough RFP definitely <laughs> submitted on their part. You note that the s two of the other bids had incomplete proposals? Yeah, right. They didn't carry it through as far. Like they Horsley offered did. extra services that Horsley Witten knew were going to be needed to, to complete the project like the public outreach. Mm -hmm. They just took it, and I think it's because their familiarity with the... The regs. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And where are we paying this from? We have um, two articles set aside for MS4 compliance with $84,000. Okay. And this is $56,880. <coughs> okay. Any other questions? And Sean, again, it's just the mapping and, and things like that. It's really not any construction of any any type right or is it does it's not n nor is it for any designing of any construction is it no but they're going to determine the areas that we need to address next whether it's with the rain garden at the outfall and that's when we'll get into looking at costs 
um, whether we can do it with one hydrodynamic separator or whether we could put a rain garden in or and that's what we'll end up with out of this report too with the stormwater mapping plan um, okay. not only the locations but recommendations I guess on how to address okay. the areas and move forward maybe the stormwater Bible we can call it people follow that just like we did with the drainage <coughs> Executive action needs to be updated to the 56,080 because it only says 800. Oh, just so you're aware. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Do I have a motion? Thank you so much. Money. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, All right. Do I have a motion? No? Yes? <laughs> motion. Sorry. Did you hear Lorraine's Move. note about the, mo the monetary? It's 56,800. Yeah, I apologize. and 80. Okay, I move the Board of Selectmen award the contract to provide Thanks. professional engineering services. For the MS 4 notice of intent submission to Worsley Witten Group for $56,080. No, $880. $880. $880. $880. $880. Who's Moved by Mr. Danahy. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Yes. 5 0. Thank you. Excellent. Um, and our third one is we put an RFP out for the engineering services and permitting for the Dolan well field mm -hmm. um, and we have the results back in the second sheet we had um, three different engineering firms come back with different costs um, we evaluated it and um, cost wise we felt Weston Sampson was the um, best contractor for this and uh, we're suggesting that we award the contract to Weston Sampson Any questions? So this one is uh, $129,000, $129,700. The high was Woodward and Curran at almost $300,000, $297,950. And then tie-in bond was $200,000. And we allocated $200,000 in the April 2017 annual meeting. <coughs> Well, we certainly know we need to do. Have we done work on this yeah. property before, Sean? Yeah, it's a, a <laughs> long time. I've heard the right? name for quite a long time. <laughs> Can you tell me? So, for one hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars, is the quantity there? Is the quality there? Would we potentially? That's and I, you know, could we? And I, it's, it wouldn't be your fault, but could we potentially? Um, Wasting money, you know, to, for, to find we, out. You know, we could be, and that's an excellent question. Um, what this incorporates, this isn't just designing permitting to do it. We're actually going to send some trucks out there and do some borings and oh, do some oh. drillings to see what type of water we get extracted. It also has pump tests. It also has quality okay. control tests to see if there's any contaminants in there. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a lot more to it. It's not going to just be before we went out with a design or, or get ready to um, build the wells, we would have an idea of how much water we could get out, when we could get the water out, and what the quality of water will be. Where's the location of this well? It's off Country Way, kind of between Country Way and the Hollett Street area. It's oh. between two houses. We have an easement to access it. It's in the woods behind Country Way. In how that close area. is it to the railroad tracks? It's within the railroad track zone. Um, Remember the south? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's outside, and I remember Paul Reedy talking about, you know, you know, maybe directional drilling or something like no, that. This was permitted uh, back in okay. the early 2000s. This, the right. Yeah. 2000s. Test wells were done, permits were obtained. Uh, then last fall, during the drought, we went down to visit the DEP to revisit the permits, and they said, well, uh, they've expired or you need to start over. So this is really re redoing. And during that permitting process, it was it was a good source of water, uh, adequate water. I mean, good good flows. Uh, it would be instead of one big well, as I remember, it was it was a well field as opposed to one Correct. straw. It's a series of straws okay. drawing from that basin area. Uh, and they uh, at the time that the per first permits were obtained, uh, it looked very viable. But then. Uh, there was a diversion of attention to look at the cranberry box. Right. Remember that? That's right. Oh, yes. And so <coughs> we're going well, to use I actually, M it was MBTA money to develop that well field back in that time. But I thought it was too close. And then tracks. we went over to look at cranberry bogs, and that didn't materialize. And right, right. And we didn't. 
So now we're back to the will. But it's not too close to the back right away. Well. Right. All right. Okay. We met with the DEP, and like Al said, and we kind of walked in and said, hey, we want to renew our permit. We're ready Try, you know, to see where it was, and they, they said no. But we did, we did point out the proximity of the railroad tracks, and that wouldn't be a deterrent from approving this as, as the way it was written from who we went over. That was an issue in number three, so two of them, so okay. Any other questions? I, I got a question separate from this. I just um, received from the... Um, Historical Commission, um, I guess a, a historical designation of Zero Kent Street and then another house that's on the driftway. But in the explanation, this is the um, the field, the gardening field. It's, it was a location for the uh, one of the four sites for the senior center. It's that parcel on between New Driftway and Old Driftway, mm -hmm. heading down towards um, Central, Country. Central Country Club. There's a, an old field that's been worked you know, um, yeah. for years. They call it Abbey Field, I think they call it, or the Abbey Field or whatnot. <coughs> but during the description I was reading about it today was they said that there was like a cement block that they believe is covering the existence of a well. And I was just curious, you know, do you folks, if you know, have that charted? They said they covered it up. But that's, that's a part of the historical, the state, whatever this is, that the state does to designate and they do the lengthy history. And I'll forward it to you, but I was curious, <coughs> is that another well that we have that's uh, known about? Or private the boat? Private Are we that no, 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 no. Citro Country Club, you know, where Driftway comes down and then you have uh, Kent Street, the old Kent Street. Yeah. You know, not, it's, there's a field right there that they use to uh, grow beans, I guess. John Lopes. Um, yeah. And that's, um, <coughs> so there, the, I'll send you the description. But right said across from a, where you have a pump station. Yeah, they say you it's a, a four by four. Pump station. That's, they now pump to the golf course, right? I don't know where it goes, but it's like the yeah. golf course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is a little anyway, bit. I'll just I'll, I'll send it to you. Maybe you have it, but I just thought it was something that they said. Okay. That well was shut down because they had high manganese. High manganese and iron in there. So it had was just used at the golf course. They put it in the pond. I thought, the gate. Gate. I thought that pond, I thought that pump was actually on the golf course. No. That's It comes out of the ground down there on Old Cass Street. Goes up to the pond, the pond, they put it into the pond. Gotcha. The <coughs> the pond, right. and, and that's what they, they use for the irrigation. The, the, the man made pond that we made when we built the course. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The lined pond. It's right. probably filling up with manganese. That's good for the fish stock, right? <laughs> no, it is. That, that well was shut down, as El said, because of manganese and iron. At that time, they had heavy right. so that manganese. I thought I that was, if you but to John's that. point, that was a well. That's why we couldn't irrigate the driving range. Because I thought it was a well on the course. We do have another well that's actually that's, on the course. It's contaminated. No, and, no, and that's no? that's in oh, use. That's, that's, uh, well, that's well, not at one time, could we not use it? Maybe I, I I could have sworn that's why it was a big dust bowl at, when at the and driving range. Then there's the question on the property so. off of uh, Greenfield, hole. off the fourth hole, whether there's another one in that vicinity. Right. I'm only mentioning. Right. I just happened to come across it. You probably have it, but if <coughs> I'll shoot it to you, and if you know. So. Yeah. We'll take a look at it. Apparently, we shut down in the early 70s when Boston Sand and Gravel. Motion? Shut down. <laughs> we'll let you the second vote to award the contract for providing engineering and permanent services, permitting services for the design and permitting of a drinking water well field on the former Dolan property to Western Sampson of Peabody, Mass, for $129,700. Second. Moved by Mr. Harris, second by Ms. Canfield. Any further discussion? There being none. All in favor? Aye. <coughs> All opposed? Great. Thank you. That's it, right? Is that uh, for you? Uh, That's it. Western Sanders had a big Christmas yes, party. Thank you very much. Well, they did oh, leave. If you look you. at some of the other projects, there is a lot of money on the table, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. The, you yeah. mean the other bids? The other bids, yeah. so and it's all apples to apples what they were bidding. So, okay, sounds good. Thanks. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, Thanks, guys. Happy New Year. Yeah. See you next year. Yeah. I'm keeping Sean here. <laughs> <laughs> Just taking, keeping Sean. Okay. Hi, Chris. How are you? Good. How's everybody? Good evening. Welcome. So, Chris is here to discuss um, adding a stop sign to a currently three-way intersection on Lotus Ave and Kingsway <laughs> and making it a four-way stop. Correct. Um, essentially, we. have Traffic rules has received some uh, issues from the neighbors stating that they feel that I, I guess essentially there was a sign wrongly installed 
there. Then it was removed, added some confusion, and they've been looking for a stop sign to be put up there to make it into a four-way stop. It's, um, I don't know if you get any pictures. We have a map. Except, but uh, yeah. it's a pretty yeah. straight yeah. road from, uh, so <laughs> really uh, considering city? situate. But uh, it's currently it's a three-way, <laughs> so we'd like to we'd like to get an action or your approval to make it into a four-way. Well, I'm all for it. Living on a corner that went from a two-way to a three-way and had to fight for a four-way, I certainly understand what um, happens when you have a three-way yeah. stop. It's just confusing. It's nutty. It's just I don't understand that whole three-way concept at all. So um, does everyone see the picture yeah. in there? One's coming up now. Put one up there too. I don't know if you need to the, the big the big stop one is the one you're adding. Is the worst one. Worst <laughs> I love visuals. Okay. Oh. Motion? Please. Um, Move to have the engineering department <laughs> install the appropriate signage and line painting and have the town of Situate traffic uh, schedule reflect Lotus Ave traffic come to a stop in a southwesterly direction at Kingsway, thus making the intersection of Lotus Ave and Kingsway a four-way stop. Second. Intersection. Moved by Mr. Dennehy, second by Mr. Vignani. Any further discussion? I just have one question. Uh, Officer Billings isn't here, but the police are all on board as well, I suspect? Yes. Yes, Okay. Yes. Okay, great. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks yes, for coming and waiting. Thank yeah. you. Uh, happy Thank holidays, everybody. Thank, Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great holiday. See you guys. Happy New Year. You too. Cool. All right. Old business. To review the town meeting dates and Mass General Bylaw, Lorraine, did you want to provide an update? I think um, this was a, a request to you. At the summer fifth block meeting, Mr. Vignani and Mr. Denny asked me to look into what was involved in changing the town meeting date. So I met with the town clerk and reviewed Mass General Law Chapter 39, along with the town charter and the town bylaws. Um, and they don't need to change anything except the bylaw. If they wanted to, it's bylaw 20140. It would require a change of town meeting. Uh, things to consider in making a change would be the budget timeline, which is very important to be able to make the town meeting schedule, as well as any state laws requiring completion by the end of June, which is stated in the state, Mass General Law. So, um, and whatever you decide that you'd like to do, it needs to be reviewed by town council. So I attached all the documents here for you to take a look at the Mass General Law, Charter, and then basically, um, the current bylaw says the annual town meeting should be held on the second Monday in April. So was your request, um, John and Tony, just to see what it would take to make the language more flexible? Yeah, we found that it was completely inflexible. Okay. And things could pop up that would cause us to need to change it and what those steps would have to be. Okay. So... The charter, so the charter is no you. problem. It's just the bylaw. Right. Okay. But you do have guidelines within Mass General Law that you have to mm -hmm. meet. That's okay. It um, basically it, it seems. Basically says it has to be held between right. February and the end of June. June, which gives you a lot of flexibility. Right. So we need to change the bylaw. Right. Put it before town meeting. Right. Uh -huh. And I think one one thing I talked to Lorraine about it would be, and again. <sighs> I forgot this was a week and a half ago we talked, but um, it was to say no later than as far as the date, whereas right now it specifically says the date. Second, yeah. So that would give you the flexibility of being able to say we're going to do it on this Tuesday or that Tuesday, right. as yeah. opposed to specifically identifying it. No, that makes sense. Are and we yeah, um, in time to put this on the, the warrant for this annual town meeting? Yeah. To update the bylaw? Yeah. We okay to add it on? Mm hmm. Whatever you, you decide. Okay. Okay. I'm all for making language only, more flexible. The only other thing you have to consider is in that same section 20140. Uh, in the third paragraph, it says the annual election of offices should be held on the sixth Saturday following the Monday on which the annual, the annual town meeting is to convene. So you'd have to ch you know, change that as well. But you'd still be required to meet 
the timeline in Mass General Law to have it concluded by the end of June. Yes, yeah, so we can add language to make sure that again it doesn't fall. The election. That the election falls by the end of June. Yeah. So they, I think the way it was um, conceived was to suggest you have town meeting, and then after town meeting, at some point you're going to have the board of selectmen elected. Because you wouldn't want to have a board of selectmen elected before you have town meeting, right. because right. all that information is going to be lost if somebody decides not to run or if they lose. Right. So I think you know the concept again would be no later than right. a certain date to right. give you the flexibility because it it's been. But you cannot have it too close either. Correct. Right. You could say at least three weeks after or something. You know, but no later. But is that something we can change? No, I think the state says right. The oh. state has that. No, it doesn't. No, I think that's in the, is that that's the charter us. or is that the um, I, statute? I provided copies of the uh, Mass General Law here yeah. for annual meetings and elections for right. you to All right, so we'll review it. And um, I mean, I, <coughs> I I didn't know you asked to do this. It makes sense to make the language a little bit more flexible. If we can do it at this meeting, help for future planning purposes. You know, and the reason is, is that we find that we either are getting close to school vacation yeah. mm -hmm. and then other situations, right. and it's trying to get people to maximize in holidays, right. maximize attendance. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's how I'm looking at it. No, exactly. I think it's a good idea. It used to be, wasn't the uh, town meeting was at like the beginning of March? Right. Yeah, had to be. And uh, then the elections were so many, it was like consistent. Which made sense. It's just that the reason why we bumped it was so early, just so early, early with all the budgeting and trying to push the budget to plan it better. Right. You know. Okay. All right. So we'll get so we'll, we'll get a proposal together for for the town meeting and put it on the warrant. All right. No vote needed for that at this time. So new business: discuss and vote board and committee appointments. I think we have one, which is the Republican Town Committee. Mm -hmm. um, due to a resignation, Lori Withrow resigned, so we need to appoint another temporary registrar for the Republican Town Committee. And the term will expire in 2019. So, um, Mr. Conley Ford has stepped up to be a temporary registrar for the Board of Registers. If somebody would like to make a motion. Um, I'm still loading. <laughs> move to approve Conway W. Ford. Um, I can't read it, it's all gibberish. Here, read mine. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, vote to appoint Conley W. Ford as a temporary registrar on the recommendation of the Republican Town Committee. His term will expire to, in 2019. Second. Moved by Mr. Vignani, second by Mr. Dennehy. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next is a discussion and vote to close the <coughs> annual and special town meeting warrants. They close today. Um, is it a suggested motion to close the warrant today? Move the Board of Selectmen to close the warrant for April 19, 2017, 2000, oops, excuse me, April 9, 2018, annual and special town meetings at 940. 20. 920. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone else needs to read yeah, the motions. Yeah. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Moved by Mr. Vignani, <laughs> second by Ms. Canfield. I should say that again. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm definitely not reading these. Yeah, Tony's <laughs> done. Tony is done. I'll stop. Okay, so. and then we do have. Um, I those yes, so yeah. we, on our desk, Lorraine right. has given us the annual licenses to uh, renew. So the, last, the last of the annual licenses. I move the Board of Select and vote to renew the following restaurant all alcohol licenses for 2018. Situate Post VFW Post number 3169, Whittles Walk, Oral Restaurant. Second. Moved by Mr. Dennehy, second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following retail package store, wine, mall, and malt licenses for 2018, Mulaney's Fish Market Corp. Second. Moved by Mr. Dennehy, second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the Board of Slack and vote to renew the following club all alcohol licenses for 2018. Hadley Golf Club. Second. Second. Moved by Mr. Dennehy, second by Ms. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move the Board of Slack and vote to renew the following annual Farmers uh, Series Pouring Permit for Malt mm -hmm. License for 2018. Untold Brewing. Moved by Mr. Dennehy. Second. Second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following common vehicular licenses for 2018. Oral Restaurant, 
Adley Golf Club, Situate Post VFW number 3169, Little's Walk, South Shore Cinemas, Mulaney's Fish Market Corp, Untold Brewing, Cry uh, Creo Frozen Yogurt, Riva Pizzeria, Rossetti 2, The Silent Chef, Mary Lou's News, The Fresh Feast, Lucky Finn Cafe, Known as Homemade, Oceanside Inn, Inn at Situate Harvard Inc. Moved by Mr. Danahy, second, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the board a second vote to renew the following entertainment license for 2018. Untold Brewing, Lucky Finn Cafe, Situate Post VFW number 3169, Adley Golf Club. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, seconded by Mr. Harris. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the board a second vote to renew the following class two licenses for 2018. Larry A. Finney. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following Class Three licenses for 2018. Ryan Allen, LLC. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, seconded by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll abstain. Move the Board of Selectmen. Four, four, one abstention, Lorraine. Mm -hmm. move the board of, uh, I move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the movie theater license for 2018, South Shore Cinemas. Second. Second. Moved by Mr. <coughs> Danahy, seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following bowling and electronic gaming license for 2018. Situate Bowl Away. Second. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the Board of Selectmen vote to issue a bed and breakfast license for 2018. Cliffside, Oceanside Inn. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Peggy? There's one by oh, Peggy. Oh, no. Ocean, no, Oceanside Drive is Oceanside Inn, isn't it? No, is it the one on Peggy? Upside, I think it's the one on Peggy. Peggy? Yeah. It's not on Peggy. It's going, going up over the, over the bridge. Yeah. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the innkeeper's license for 2018? The inn at Situate Harbor. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you for reading that. Um, I have a question. Yes. I, I don't want to have misstepped. Um, if I'm a member of a, the, a club that was um, just voted, should I have abstained from voting? Probably. It's up, it's up to you. I, I thought about that when you voted. But yeah, no, not, it didn't occur to me until you did. It doesn't, doesn't really matter, does it? If you'd like to, we if can just like re-vote it. If you'd like to, we can redo it. Yeah. I think it's probably a good idea. Which one is it? I mean, Adelaide really? Golf Club. It's uh, there's two places. They enter three places. We'll forget it then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read them. <laughs> no, I can't even do that. Want to rescind your vote, John? I think John. Tell you what I'm going to do. Hang on one second. Okay. Uh, well, in future, I will. That's right. Yeah, no, I just. That's really up to the person. If they feel there's a conflict, it's right. It's if you're a part owner or had some financial interest. No, I just like to go there. Which is <laughs> <laughs> like most of the places on the list. No. Okay. All right, just wanted to check. Be transparent. All right, <laughs> All right so we're not going to revote? Okay. On, okay. on the advice of our esteemed. That's fine. All righty, uh, correspondence. I think we have one correspondence, John. Let me find it. Um, Aha. Uh -huh. It's just, uh, I think, an announcement of a this is celebration. Uh, a surprise party for <laughs> Steve Jasmowski's <laughs> retirement. Uh, it's a celebration on January 10th at 6 p.m. at the Barker Tavern. For those of you who don't know, that's at 21 Barker Road. Um, and it's a buffet dinner, presentation of award for 30 years. Please don't tell Steve. Um, the cost is $30, <coughs> but uh, for all those out there who'd be interested in going, it's going to be a great opportunity to... I uh, wish Steve well in, uh, in his endeavors and moving on, and to thank him for 30 years plus of dedication to uh, Situate and doing a great job in valuing the properties and uh, trying to keep things fair. So um, all are in welcome. Please don't tell Steve. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I don't see any other correspondence in there. Uh, so next is just approval of the meeting minutes from the December 5th meeting, which I'll abstain from since I was not here. Move to accept the meeting minutes for the Board of Selectmen meeting held on December 5th, 2017, when Tony Vignani was the chairman and actually got the meeting done within like an hour. 
I'm sorry, but there's, a, there's an oh. update to the uh, okay. executive <laughs> <laughs> to the meeting. I, take I second that one. <laughs> All right, I, let me I I strike that. Two sets of minutes. Uh, All right. One is from the November 4th. Sure, I'll strike that. Strike that motion. Right. motion I'll, please. I'll move the to accept the meeting minutes for the Board of Selectmen meeting held on December 5th and November 14th, 2017. Second. Motion by Mr. Danahy, second by Mr. Vignani. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 I abstain. 4-0. Uh, as, as to both of them or just to the um, November 14th? Oh, December 5th. 5th. December 5th. And I abstain from November 14th. You don't have to abstain because you weren't there. You, got, right. you read them. So actually, that's right. It's just time. Okay. Um, so do you want to abstain, both of you, from? Yeah. For like, I wasn't there, so. Yeah, I abstained from mine. Do we have to do them separately? You'd have to do them separately. Move to rescind first motion. my prior motion. <laughs> Second. Second by Mr. Fignani. All in favor? Of rescinding? Of rescinding the motion I just made. Aye. 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 All right. I move to accept the meeting minutes for the Board of Selectmen held on December 5th, 2017. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, seconded by Mr. Vignani for the fifth. All in favor? Aye. 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 I abstain. Move to accept the meeting minutes for the Board of Selectmen held on November 14th, 2017. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, seconded by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 And all abstain. Okay. Get that's ready. Get my nose job done. Yes. <laughs> they look Doesn't it look up. beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little button. You want to Uh Miss Canfield, did you have anything you wanted to add before we adjourn? Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, you and I attended the Reeves Across America um, event this Saturday, and it was it was very. Um, touching and it was great to see so many people that participated and I just wanted to thank there was you know so many groups that helped make that happen that I'll, I won't name them because I'll miss them but it was it was a really uh, touching ceremony very good that's it mm -hmm. the graves look beautiful they, also. didn't they I have a picture if, if we wanted to put it on the uh, website um, Sean no not tonight no Tony um, last Thank chance to uh, yeah, good job. Mm -hmm. Last uh, chance to to shop locally, so please, you got a couple of days left before Santa gets here, so head up to the harbor or to North Situate or one of the villages and support the local people. And um, also support your local teams. Every Tuesday and Friday night, there's a game at the gym. There's wrestling matches going on. There's a lot going on in this town, so get out and support them. Um, and I wanted to say I'm sorry I was late to the meeting tonight. I was late because um, mm -hmm. my son's fifth grade basketball team was actually um, playing uh, during the halftime during the boys' basketball. It was 21-21, and I'm their coach. So I actually was out <laughs> with a tie and everything trying to get the guys running up and down the court. And I have to say it was a nice thing for um, the high school to ask younger kids to go out and play. It was really cute. Um, and actually a lot of the kids were yelling and screaming at the players, the fifth graders, take threes and shoot threes and it was, it was really fun to watch them. So my apologies for being late. I just um, um, wanted to just clarify that. I just want to wish everybody happy holidays to those people um, who are celebrating. Uh, happy Hanukkah to the uh, people who celebrated Hanukkah and a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank and this you. just in, the high school team won tonight. They did. Yeah. Jake Wilson hit a buzzer beater and they beat Quincy and I think they're undefeated right now. So they are 4 0. That's, so that's the boys' game. Beat reporter out there. <laughs> Thumb on the pulse. It's very good. Um, I just have three things. Um, number one, uh, on Friday, the Affordable Housing Trust closed on the sale of uh, 163 Stockbridge uh, to a wonderful young mother from Situate, Megan Fougere. So she's very happy. She's in her new home. And uh, so uh, thank you to Steve Irish, Barbara Cox, Ruth Wagner. Um, and Nancy Chapman is one of the newer members who worked really, really hard to uh, get that through the lottery system and, and uh, the whole process for subsidized housing is not an easy one. So um, great stuff, so great stuff. So thank you for that. Um, and then I just wanted to uh, remind folks, you know, everyone's so great at supporting Situate Community Christmas, the food pantry at this time, the time of giving. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to some of those those folks out there that privately help. I know um, 
I think it's uh, Mrs. McMahon collected a lot of money for the victims of the Jamie's fire. Um, I don't know her personally, but I know that's a very nice way to give back to those who lost their jobs as a result of the fire. Um, and also, there's another gentleman out there who collects presents and ships them to deserving children, right. even around the country. Um, I don't know him either, but we have great people in this town that certainly come together and, and help one another and in the spirit of giving. Thank you. And uh, as John said, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy New Year to all. So thank you. Motion. Uh, Anything uh, else? Uh, one last Anything thing. Else? I do have one last <laughs> thing. Um, I also want to say, Al, thank you. Thank you very much for stepping up to the town the in a time of need. And I just, uh, I wasn't here for it, so I'm sorry, but I'm going to say thank you very much. Wait, 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 are you going to fire at me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll give you a golden parachute out. Not yet. Not yet. Just fly right out of here. On the third. And thank you. Yes, thank you, Al. All right. Good. Motion to adjourn. <coughs> so moved. So moved by Mr. Denny, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, Good night everyone. Good night.